Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Play It Painted Live. Hope you're having a good Sunday evening. Let's get going with one of these people. You know how we do. I have got to open up my my what's it called? My uh, my comment section. I got to open up my comment section. So yeah, we're checking out, tonight we're going to be working on the Malibu Crossroad 7. Well, how do I just, I just want to watch it. I just want to watch it. So I got pride in front of us right now. Okay, there we go. That's open. Let's go ahead and share this with somebody. Let's share it. Let's share it. Somebody wants to watch. Some sometimes people like to watch. I don't know. We're just gonna we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna do it. We'll see if anybody is around. Let's just throw this out there. Let's just throw it out there. Alright. Did I copy that correctly? Oh, my computers in here take so long to load things. There we go. I'm just going to send that on its merry way. And whatever happens, happens, right? We don't care. Okay. All right. So, yes, we are working on the Crossroads 7. Um, you can see I got some of the skin done on Pride there. So, you got Pride. You got Wrath. Who's, like, the most emo. Oh, I'm the most emo. And you have... Uh, uh, you got... Envy without his, without his uh, dope mechanical organ thing. You got uh, the big man himself, Gluttony. Now this kind of bugs me. I'm not sure what happened there. It's just like dimples in the plastic or something. They kind of look like liver spots there. But you know, whatever. And you got uh, forget. I forget who what. So. This is Pride. This is I. Um, I forget her name, but she's the guild one. Whatever guild is. Uh, greed? I don't know. And you got Sloth, who is the uh, Sloth is the Rezzer guy, and you got Lust, who is the Ten T. The 10T one, who is awesome, like by far, far and away best sculpt in Crossroads 7. Stupid 10T has all the good stuff. Although I do like Envy. Envy's cool, but it's it's a lot of work. Okay. So, anyways, this is what we're painting tonight. We're gonna paint through some of these. I think right now, I think we got to start with Wrath, because he's the most edge lord of them all. So we're going to start with Wrath. You guys have any questions, comments, threats, let me know. Uh, hey, what up, Maine? Get started. And, yeah. He's got, he has to be the most emo. Oh, man, I didn't, ch okay, hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up. I got to change the. I gotta change my wet palette. One second, guys. What the hell? It's not. I'm not being very professional right now. Gotta change this. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna do it the lazy man way though. I'm not gonna do the full rinse out like you're supposed to do. Cause I don't want to bleed too far. I don't want you guys to be like unsupervised. Mm not ready to deal with life we're just gonna do this 
Are you doing any painting, Mark? Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, so here's a lazy man's version of it. I just do that. And I just do this. Okay, so there's that. Now that I have a new wet palette, guess what? I don't need it for this step. So let's break out the... Uh, we're going to do some Volopus Pink on the, the main swirly bodies of this thing. Because it's supposed to be like red, which is kind of dumb. I think it should be purple. I think it should be purple, personally. What do you think? I think it should be purple, man. That should be purple, not dumb red. But that's what the that's what the studio art is. So, for the whatever, the artwork art is this volupus pink. So we'll volupus pink this. And we'll be sad about it later. So if you guys are just joining us, welcome to Play a Painted Live. Let us know what you're painting or what you should be painting. Once again, we're painting The Crossroad 7. The Crossroad 7! So here's the hand. Whoa! What the hell? <laughs> it sounded like Mark jumped on and then, like, had to take a shit. And, <laughs> and like strained real hard and then disappeared. What's up, Nelson? Man, you must have been busy. I thought we were going to see you at uh, CQ today for the Legion thing. So I went down there. Me and uh, Blade Wolf showed up down there. Played a little foe during the day there. That was pretty dope. It was pretty hot. Yeah. He misses the days playing Batman with you, Merrick. You know what? I'll, I'm just going to come out. Me I'm and, uh, Discord and not coming we through. It down there. Shito. Shito. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. Um, well, I, I will say it. this at great personal risk. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right now. I kind of want to play a game of Batman. No no lying. I kind of do. I kind of, I don't know what, I got the bug. Like, I saw some Batman shit lately. I'm like, ah, oh, I kind of want to play a game. But I kind of don't, if that makes sense. You say you, say you want to play a game, and then you start doing setup. Mm -hmm. By the time you're done doing setup, you're like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> so I feel like I've already played a full game. Sometimes even Malavo is kind of like that too, though. Like that's you know, true. I set up a full game of Malavo, and I'm like, um, kind of tired already. I don't know if we want to <laughs> play this. But then we play 35 stones, and I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Um. Batman actually does take longer to set up than Malifo. Yeah, because you have to set up the, uh, you have to set up lamps, and then you have to set up, you know. You got your scenario, your, right? Then you gotta, yeah. then you gotta select your objectives, and like, oh, you know, there's like 25 different types of objectives in the game now. Then you gotta get your upgrades, then you gotta get, um, what are those other things called? Strategies? Your team bonuses. Not the, yeah, team bonuses, but then there's like those strategy things, right? Like move a roll a d6 and move a gutter one inch, and you know. Yeah. I forget. I think they're called strategies, right? Roll a d6 and go fuck yourself. Setup is what makes it pretty. I agree that it makes it pretty, but there are like probably six steps that you could avoid, like that the game could you could t pull out of the game. And no one would be sad, right? No, you could probably, 
you could you pull also... lanterns out of the game, and would miss them. What's that? You could pull lanterns out of the game, and nobody would miss them. Or lamps. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, lamps lamp barely yeah. do anything. Yeah. Um, unless you're like, oh, I have you know, I have thirty centimeter range, and I can fire all the way across the board. Um, <laughs> but then you're like, oh, but you can't see because of the lamp. That's about it. But there's, <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff you do not need. You do not need 30 different types of objectives. That's true. You, you just do like two types of objectives. You'd be fine. You don't need um, a stupid amount of funding. Oh, 1,500 funding. Let's figure it out. Like you don't need two different point systems. Point systems suck already. As it is. I, I don't like point systems. You don't need two different point systems to worry about when you're playing a game of Batman. Yeah. Like, right? You should just be like, that dude comes with a machine gun, balances points to reflect the fact that he's got a machine gun. Don't make it like a whole other set of points I gotta worry about. Something that the... Wow. The fact that there are a bunch of just, like, street-level thugs in a freaking Batman game... It's like, you kind of missed the point of why I want to play this Batman game. Uh, okay. Like, I don't know. I, I, don't I, like hate... having, I like having regular thugs in Batman. I just don't think you need to have this. You don't have to have intricate rules for them. But yeah. You and... be able to take them down pretty quick. But, yeah, they're and... a little, I don't know. And more and more, it feels like that's kind of like... That feels like that's the way the game is built to be played. Yeah. It's kind of my problem. It's like, you're supposed to only take Joker and maybe a Harley and like eight or nine Joker thugs. Like, no, that's yeah, not yeah. what I want to do. It's not what I want to do. I don't want to take Batman and like eight cops. Oh, man, I kind of do, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, Matt? I don't know. I, the, I, I see where you're going with that. I don't know. We could play the DC game. You don't have to take thugs for that kind of game. Looking at those cards worries me, though. The DC game? Yeah, looking at the DC game cards worries me. It looks like there's, like, a lot. Fair enough. And if I want to play a game like that, I'll just play Malifo. Yes. Look at these guys. These guys are they're, they're huddled up around the most edge lord. They love him yeah, and his edgy lord self. You doing any painting, Matt? What up, man? I yeah. am putting the finishing touches on my nightmare collect room. Oh, jealousy. Although I love my new Colette crew. I played some Colette today, because I missed the girls. I did. Yeah. I missed them. I missed them a lot. So, so I had to... Sorry, Sean. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to break them out against Sean. I was like, on the way there, I was like, I'm going to play Karis. I'm going to play Karis. I'm going to play Karis. Karis is what I'm going to play. Karis, here we go. Karis. 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 And then we flipped the then we flipped the scenario and I was like, Yep, this is a good scenario for Car Colette. Let's do it. For Carolette. Stripping models. Oh. Um I It's not fun. I, yeah, and the it was corrupted idol and the schemes weren't really weren't the most Colette friendly schemes. Like Power Ritual was in there, which is dope and um you know, there's a couple good ones in there. Power Ritual, Dig Their Graves are, are good Colette schemes to take. So I was like, I just missed the girls. I'm going to play them. So I played Lovely Colette. Girl. What's that? Lovely girls. Yes. So I took Colette Colette. into Seamus. And, uh, and I decided to take a Corfi duet. At 35 soul stones. Which usually I think is not great. Right? Mm -hmm. It's 12, it's 12, 12 into 12 your 35. 
but, but um, they wrecked the ship pretty hard. They yeah. had Seamus nearly dead in the first turn. That was Jesus. terrifying. Yeah, a lot of good flips in the first turn. Um, so I got a late activation with the duet. You know, three three AP into into Seamus, and he's nearly dead. Um, so that was nuts. And then so Seamus died. He didn't last. I think he made it two turns before going down. And Betty Nora was in there. And she went down after a couple of turns to um, the drill because the drill owns her. Um, yeah, that damn drill. And then the rest of it was just Colette kind of just dunking on the rest of the team. So yeah, so it it was that was another rough one, another rough one and. Some apologies were made to Sean. <laughs> yeah, and I I took a um I took a a, a heal bot a medical automaton. That thing mm -hmm. was awesome because he uh, Sean ended up red jokering on Colette with the fifty cal. So Oof. he did like eight damage to Colette. Sorry. I stoned it. I stoned it and triggered. Um, uh, fade away to reduce it all the way down to four damage. But at one point, Colette was at two health, mm -hmm. and that heal bot just did healing things. It was nuts. Brought her all the way back up to seven health with one activation. God uh, damn. And I was like, okay, here we go. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go oh, again. Shit. Yeah. It was, it was a good game, though. It was a good game. Really want want to run that um, Yuko crew because Bill Algren has an ability that's just stoic nod, and yes. that's his heal. Yes, Bill Algren is pretty. I just love the Yuko crew. That's just such a cool crew to run. Yeah, I just like too much of the thunder shit. Too nice. It's too nice, Main. <gasps> I have some color bleed. I have some color bleed onto his boots. We're going to call that OSL. <laughs> Look. Fancy OSL. Back there. You saw it. It's never a mistake if it's on purpose. I can't get to some of these parts. Uh, I cannot get to them. Yeah, that was my problem. Uh, painting that one and the one that's in like the giant crab or a lot. Envy. Yeah. Especially envy. I I painted that for a commission, and I regret not putting. Oh. Like yeah. painting Envy and then putting him in there. Am I going to be around Tuesday? I'm never sure anymore these days. I'm going to try to be around Tuesday. I will. That's all I can say, is I will try to be around Tuesday. Similarly, I will not be around Thursday. Okay. Well, if you're not around Thursday, the, up, the only upside to that is that does increase my chances of being around Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, I have, Whoa. I have an appointment with a new doctor that I have to go to so I can keep getting my medicine. Okay. Because my former doctor um, had a baby and moved back to Florida. Florida. Kind of not exactly in that order, but she was only here because her husband was uh, in the military and uh, um, his post was the one by Palm Springs. Oh, okay. And she, um, when he, when his service was up, he retired, got a job, and then they moved back to Palm, or Florida, because that's where they were from. Where the hell is my black? I don't know. 
Let's go with this, uh... uh let's go with Sloth here. Am What's I just up, everyone? Not... Welcome to Plate Painted Live. Let us know what you're painting or what you should be painting oh, tonight. Shit. We're working on Crossroads 7. So Wrath is just basically done, and now we're working on Sloth. We're supposed to have a red band here around the hat, black hat, gray, black, and black and gray. Very simple plate. Very simple paint style paint schemes on these. Once you do the once you do the skin, the faces, that kind of stuff. They're pretty simple. Here the um disconnect crew box. Are they really? Yeah. I better buy one. Dang it. I don't even it, need envy. I just okay. Full disclosure. I just think this model is freaking amazing. That's it. That's this model is just so great. You could. I. New play Nicodemus. No, the. Yeah, I mean. That's just. Or when you buy your McMorning crew. She's just great. I just look at this is awesome. I don't know. Oh, you mean yeah. Lust. Lust is great. Yeah. Yeah, I want. I I want that crew box for Lux. L Lux Lust. Lust might be... I might even consider running Lust with Mei Fang. Like, if I run Mei Fang as a 10T crew. But then I would have to buy a bunch of other stuff. And I don't want to do that, said the liar. <laughs> oh, it's right... God. Barely had one freaking cocktail, and I'm already ignoring the fact that my black paint is right in front of me. So, what is the best way to paint really flat babies like that? Oh, <laughs> skip the contrast. Bases, not babies. How you paint flat babies? Oh, babies. Um, yeah. Honestly. I talked to Chris, and I was like, man, I do not like these bases. <laughs> they bug me. Um, yeah, the only real way to paint these would be, uh, you can use contrast, it just looks weird. You can also just paint them, but then you're essentially just doing all freehand, right? Because it's just a perfectly flat surface. Um... It would be nice if I thought about maybe painting um, like brush on primer just to give it some um, just to give it some texture so it would grab the contrast paint a little bit more differently but it just doesn't it's just what I end up doing is I do contrast I'll do contrast paint and then I'll do a little bit of line highlighting on it but they're I, I don't like them. I just, I don't think, ugh. If they I'd had admit. a little bit of texture on them, they'd be cool, but not into these <laughs> flat babies. Oh, shoot. I haven't finished. Yeah. Nobody likes the flat babies. But yeah, so got in a game today. It was cool. Um, then I was, uh, I forgot the rest of my statement. I was supposed to do something else and I didn't do it. I don't remember. But yeah, there was a yeah, Legion there... event today at the shop. Mm -hmm. And I thought, so I thought for sure I'd see Nelson. Didn't see Nelson. Didn't see Jason. I was like, okay, that's weird. Um, but saw Chris there playing Legion. <laughs> I'm a little surprised oh. Legion is still going. Chris plays Legion. Yeah, apparently, um, I mean, there's like, there's a group for it at CQ that plays. I mean, I certainly don't care, but. Yeah. It's hard to keep track of, like, which one of those Star Wars games is in. Mm-hmm. Because I remember for the longest time it was X-Wing, then it was Armada, then it was X-Wing again, and then it was Legions, and then it was 
It's too much. Every, Chris does actually play everything. <laughs> Chris plays everything. Yeah, we saw we were both busy. A lot of regular could. Okay. Yeah, that happens. I know that used to happen with Guild Ball too. There's a the next Guild Ball tournament I have scheduled, which is the twenty second. A lot of people said they couldn't make it too. So come on down, play some Guild Ball. <laughs> this is your chance. I would still rather just play Malifaux. Dang, you have given up. You've given I never up. gave up on Guild Ball. <laughs> like, I will return to it one day. <laughs> Today is not that day. <laughs> or I guess the 22nd is not that day. Oh, nice. It's like, you can only play an event and watch the same two or three people duke it out for a top three, like, so many times well, in the, over the course of, like, two or three years. Is it like them two or three people ain't gonna be there? Hmm? <laughs> When's the next Malifo event? Oh. I don't know. I don't know. If, if you guys could convince me you'll make it on the 22nd, <laughs> maybe we flip the event. Right? I don't we just pi I don't pirated think... it into a what? Malifo event. What? We just pirated it into a Malifo event. Yeah. I don't think, yeah. uh, I don't think, I don't think Kelly's gonna give me any shit for swapping it. If you guys are like, no, I can make, you know, because there's like two or three people that are like, I can't make the Guild Ball event. And those are like the, the diehard Guild Ball players. Mm -hmm. I mean, it may disappoint a couple of people. Like, if people are traveling in, that would suck. Um, so it may disappoint a couple of people, but I don't know. Like, it's not it's not too late to change it if we did, if if we're like let's if, if like. We're like, yeah, we could get 10 people if we switch it to a Malifo event. I don't think, I don't think, um, Comic Quest would give me a hard time. I can't would... split, oh, here's the other issue too. It's also a paint day. So I can't split it. Then it would be three events. <laughs> it's three events, nobody's happy. Yeah. The only thing, in fact... Maybe that's why it has to remain a Guild Ball event then. Because it's easier to run a... Because Guild Ball events are... They, they run a lot easier. Like, they don't need... They don't need nearly as much attention as a Malifaux event does. Mm-hmm. So, maybe... I may... I may definitely... May definitely. Well, um... I might come down for a paint event, but I just don't think I'm ready to exit my break from Guild Ball just yet. Okay. Fair enough. I mean... It's like, I like Guild Ball, but... Yeah, our meta is... really, really like our, 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 our Guild Ball meta is pretty stale. Yeah. It's admittedly pretty stale. We just don't have... Uh, we have, like, our top players, and it's all fairly locked up, it feels like. Um, and Guild Which Ball isn't too, you know. hasn't really... It's got new stuff to play, like, the since the errata, but it's still not... I don't know. But, like, I looked at the errata kind of briefly, and it's like... I do like the errata quite a bit, actually. Like, my team's got, overall, a lot better. Especially Alchemist got a lot better since the errata. I do want to pick up the new Alchemist Captain. He looks pretty cool. Shoma. Most of I could paint up, like, a punk Alchemist crew. It's true. You can do that. Wait till the new... Well, yeah, I mean, I should be getting... Um... 
Uh, I should be getting my rookies this week. So I'll have Nomad and Kami. Kamehameha. So we'll have uh, we'll have some new stuff to play with. But yeah, but you know, if I show up and somebody else wants to show up and there's a free table and I bring my terrain, I don't want to yeah, play Malifaux. Yeah, like I wouldn't stop that. If you and Matt show up and like we're going to play some Malifaux while you guys are playing Guild Ball and we got space for it, I'm going to be like, yeah, for sure. We're like, going to play Malifaux and if you don't like it, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um um like at the the Legion was cool. The Legion event was cool cuz they had room and the RPG guys were outside. So Where they belong. So me and <laughs> so me and Sean got a table. Just like, yeah, sure. Can we have this half a table to play Malfo? Cool. Now I get to paint my little li li Lilith. Lilith's. Kami is really fun. I'm gonna try her. I'm gonna try her, uh, um, Scott. I'm. I do have. I, I am skeptical though. I am skeptical. I just don't know. Like, she looks fun in that. Okay, I'm playing Fuse on the Alchemist type thing. Like, yeah, you can line up the types of goals and stuff that you can do with Fuse. But pound for pound influence for influence influence i just i have a hard time sitting down one of my other squatties in favor of her i feel like i get a lot more out of the other squatties if i was to play malpho in a tournament i'd play levi my meta so burn on my playing levi oh my God. levi's cool though oh man why did i do that oh well I keep going back and forth on picking up the Levi crew. The just I love the miniatures in the Levi crew. Yeah. They have some of the better sculpts. And I'm going to say this and probably upset somebody watching right now. But I do feel like the from what I've seen so far of the new M3E sculpts. I like their two sculpts better for the most part. For the most part, I like the plastic, the 2E plastic Victorias better than the 3E plastic Victorias. You guys heard me say that. I like the, um, I like the 2E Marcus box better than the 3E Marcus box. Um, I will make an exception mm -hmm. and say I v vastly prefer the Colette 3E over the Colette 2E box, although. The composition of the 2E box is better because you get mannequins in the 2E box. And you don't have an easy way to get mannequins uh, if you were to just jump into 3E, which sucks. Um, Does 3E not come with mannequins? Nope. Huh. You get Colette, Cassandra, three doves, three showgirls, and that's it. Hmm. It was a l that was a bit disappoint. But your Colette sculpt is so much better than it. The 2E Colette sculpt is pretty sad. Pretty sad times. But Nightmare Colette box it's I do like that Nightmare Colette box. I need to repair mine, and then I can paint it. Just so I can use Brolette. Boy Colette. Or... Yeah, I, I have it, and I'm still probably just going to like try to proxy a Zatanna when I can. Because it's Zatanna. I know. Satana is just a better. She's just a great sculpt. I need some Satana. Mm -hmm. 
It's another company that just hates distribution. Look at that. Or like non-Spanish local stores having their product. He liked the, the slap of the base. The slap of the base. I don't know what, uh, so yeah, and I, I, the three e boxes haven't, in my opinion, they haven't quite, they're not quite there. Which is probably the one in, well, one of the main disappointments in 3e, as much as I love 3e, is that the, I don't feel like their box sets are as nice as a lot of the 2E stuff. I really want to see what they're going to do with uh, 3E Misaki, though. Yeah. I kind of like... I like the pose that she's in in the art. Mm -hmm. I think 3E Lynch will also be cool. Yeah. But I need to, I I'm I need to go find some metal Vix, because those the three Evix I think are they just they're not good, and the kits are not good to put together either. Their faces are in like three different pieces, and that's that's kind of uncalled for. <laughs> that's kind of some terrible shit right there. Yeah, those geisha are in, like, six pieces each. And, like, the robes are three pieces. Or between three And the legs are, like, two separate pieces. And if you put the robes together before figuring out, like, where the legs should go, then you're just SOL. Whoa! Do you just, you like, generically any... stick the feet to the bottom of the robes? Well, some of them you can't do that, because some of them are, like, you know, peeking a leg out. Mm-hmm. weird thing about Malifo that I noticed too it's and I don't know how I feel about it but on a lot of evenings when we game I'm like fairly happy with just like one game of Malifo <laughs> like okay I'll just hang out the rest of the evening I don't really need a second game I don't know what that's about we finish a game and I'm usually like meh I'm just gonna chill. Don't really need to do anything else. That's one thing I will say about Guild Ball. That's pretty great. Is like, you finish a game of Guild Ball for me, and I'm like, oh yeah, throw him back down, play another one. Malfo is a little more, be probably because of the setup, and because. You know, even there, even though I wouldn't say Malifo has much list building, you st it still has the, you know, it still has a higher phase. You still have to look at your strats and schemes and build your, your next crew for your next game. But yeah, I've been like pretty good to just like play the one game and be like, okay, I'm good for the evening. I'll just watch. And damn it, I need, I need to record a game. Locals, I need help. I need help, locals. 
There's only so many games I can con Yvonne to play with me. So we gotta, <laughs> we gotta figure, figure out how to record games in a more efficient manner. Let's see. Single game Malfo does it for me too. Guild Ball, I can finish up a five round tournament. Still want to play. War Machine tournaments would burn me out for weeks. That, yeah, War, I've, I've played War Machine only on a very limited basis. So I, I don't know about that. But uh, I can, from what I know of War Machine, I, 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 I'm not going to dispute that. You know, it was down to record. Cool. And I'm, well, I'm wondering if we, the ones, some of the early stuff that worked better was to have a cameraman. So I'm wondering if we just want to, like, I, like if I record a game of two other people playing, that might be okay. Oh, you're working for yourself, man. That's cool. Well, hope, yeah, that's good, dude. Yeah, we gotta. I gotta line up time. I I lost. Uh, well, the bad news right now is like my my local customer shit that was going on, um, is all working very well, <laughs> and that can make it bad from a hey. I'm just gonna let's just play Malfo in the afternoon, that thing. It's a little harder. I'll just disappear for an hour. Yeah, and a half. it's a little harder to get my trigger when stuff is working well, right? It's a defensive trigger, so I have to fail the duel, and I I haven't been fit like I've been flipping high cards, and I can't cheat down, so you know, it's been tough. Just keep you have like eight red jokers, and yeah. you just keep flipping them. It's like them. the time where you're like, oh, I I need to fail this so that I can. So that I can, uh, you know, cheat in for the, for the trigger, and I can't fail it. Like that, there was a, a local job I was calling Afghanistan, because I've been on that job for like two years, dude. It was like two years. I, I and I, um, I was telling Andrew at, uh, not, not Andrew Jones, but Andrew at Comic Quest. Because I would always show up and just, like, game at a certain point. I'm like, hey, man, it's game. Let's record. Andrew's like, dude, how are you always down here? <laughs> like, I have Do this you ever job leave? down here. I have this, like, super, like, VIP level customer who is just so hard to please. We have to get everything absolutely perfect for. And... Uh, you know, so there's always like, oh, let's do this, and then let's wait. Let's do this, and let's check on it. Let's do this. And so I always had time before. Like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Guess what? While we're waiting, blah, 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 we'll do that. Um, and then now it's, like, working. <laughs> it's very upsetting. Yeah, it's really upsetting when things go good. And then I had another job, too, that was like, I'm going to pocket a soul stone, right? And make this happen. And then the dude went and fixed it himself. I'm like, what the? What? 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 <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's great. Fantastic. I don't have to come down there. How great. Wow. You really saved me a trip, buddy. Thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> Thanks for ruining my Thanks. hobby days. Thanks a lot. Because it's like stuff like that, that, that you know, it's sometimes like a, a customer, it would take them uh, an entire day, two days to fix. And I can do it in, you know, I can do it with a suggestion. Like I can just, I mean, like, oh, no, you just sucking. do this. And then I just break out. <laughs> and I'm on the phone. All right, man, who's going to get this game? Let's do <laughs> that's, 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 that's what it was. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> so welcome, everybody. If you are just joining us, let us know what you're painting, what you should be painting. We're painting some Crossroads 7 tonight. And we're talking about my 
We're talking about my special ability called Disappearing Act. That has been failing lately. Requires a seven mask and, you know... Well, it's no, it, it's been working extremely well lately, but just this past uh, this past week is the end of it. Ah, uh. because I was like hitting people up. I'm like, look, man, last week was my last official week on the the um, summer schedule, which I had, you know, every other Friday off. So I like, so we could, you know, game during the days on Fridays, and then. This week, uh, that was the, the last bit of that. Powers advanced too far. It oozes over the phone to fix your issues without you being... <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, crap. Damn it. Fixed. But you never know. You never know, right? There's still, there's still a lot of local stuff going on. So I could still, I could still top deck. It's still top There's deck still of seven so masks. Much that go wrong. What's that? There's still so much that can go wrong. Yeah. I could still top deck that seven mask and be like, hey, man, who is the... I need people that are just going to be frosty. And they're just there. <laughs> just show up. We got this. Good, sounds like an invitation for bad times. <laughs> well... Yeah, you still have to watch out for the Spurg. The Spurg is still a thing. And I guess the the people at the shop now know that that's code. When we start talking about the Spurg. <laughs> Who we're talking about. Which is, it's not really code. It's just the Spurg. Yeah. You know who the Spurg is? Damn Spurg. Yeah, like you hear that term, you look like you hear that term, you look in the back room, and you go, "Oh, okay, it's them." <laughs> or you can watch them in the other video. <laughs> yeah, you could hear some dude talking about how his terminators are deep striking. <laughs> now I kind of regret deleting that um, that. 90 minute game of Batman I had the Batman board game actually mm -hmm. that that was completely inaudible because I didn't have lapel mics at the time like man I I am so lucky that I got lapel mics that day that I because I, I they came in the mail like the night before I was like I don't know if I'll need these I'll just I'll, you know but I'll throw them in my bag <laughs> And you go in there and ah, for the, 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 the Grey Knights and uh, Loyalist Tracker. My Grey Knight assaults you for <laughs> three D for three thousand three six. Yeah, so that I'm glad I'm glad that I have some equipment to deal with that. But even then you can still hear it, like it's still pretty prominent. But yeah, oh, wow. still working on the, still working on the the, um, the game, the video, the the recording format for the game. Mm hmm. Is it um? Is it difficult to record Malifo games? Yes. It can be very difficult to mal record Malifo games because if you were to do like if you've seen, um, I think the there's some the uh, business <laughs> uh, there's some good Malifo battle reports on YouTube like some of the better ones I forget the name of that channel it's like a German channel where they record they do Malifo bat reps. And they're yeah. super well done, right? They show the flips, they show they show a, an overview of the battlefield. They go over every activation in detail, but they but they cut out what they don't need. 
So you get every activation, you get every flip, you get every cheat, and all that kind of good stuff, right? But it's you don't still get the double walks. Oh, you know, you still get double walks. You just don't get like all the. You don't get the banter or the people stopping. The oh. bank. You don't get stuff like okay. that. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very good, but um, it's a really good battle report. But I just don't have the time or resources to like sit there and edit the way these guys edit their battle reports. Like they really cut it up and clean it, and um, they're super, super well done. Um, I don't. So I looked at that and said, okay, the, that's amazing, but I would, I would never, I would, ne I don't, I just don't have the ability or the bandwidth to make my battle reports like that. Then you see some other ones like Third Floor Wars has some really, really good um, game. Like when they, when they do cover a game, you know, it's it's shot. It's shot in the attic, and they have the multiple camera angles, and things are switching, and they have people, like, they have, like, basically live direction happening. So you can see every, you know, every flip, every cheat, you can hear the banter, you can hear all the discussion, and that kind of stuff. So you get 100% of the game. That's cool, too, but now you're looking at, you know, two and a half, three hour episodes to watch a battle report. And I don't have time for that, either. Uh, yeah. So, what I landed on was, you know, let's do, let's do kind of what I do for Guild Ball, um, and let's uh, let's let's condense the game down. We don't need to see flips unless they're super hypercritical. Um, but let's just you know cover the highlights of the game so that you see. So that you can actually kind of learn lessons from the game. You're not actually, you know, studying the exact minutia of what was flipped and um, that kind of stuff. Uh, but you still get, I think in my opinion, that you still get something out of watching the games I put up. Because they kind of, they'll cover an overview. Okay, this, this player is doing this and this is their approach. Did it work? Did it not work? What was good about it? What wasn't good about it? That kind of stuff. So it's cool and all, but I don't know. I I like my format. I want to stick with that. Um, it still needs a little bit of cleanup, but it's pretty good overall. All right, let's do the cool. Let's do the the cool bass string stuff. Oh, thanks, Scott. Definitely keep the bat report down to one hour is best. Yes, and I, and I try to do that. I try to keep it down below an hour. Um, you know, if I can go 30, 45 minutes for a battle report, that's great. Um, obviously, the exception that I do is um, the stuff with Yvonne because the end, like the value in watching that is is the banter. It's not. <laughs> we're not like doing. We're not doing like you know hyper strategic. High, yeah, we're not doing like uh, like hyper strategic in de like it's just like w watching an outsider like narrate Malphone. That shit is pretty funny. <laughs> That's so. I just present hers really without um, without really cutting it at all. I you know I moved some of the banter stuff around, but I don't. There's no point in like people want to watch that. They want they want to watch the exchange more than the they're not there to like get tactically learned on the stuff there. But yeah, thanks Scott. I my camera work still just sucks though. <laughs> That's probably the number one issue I'm having. My wait, camera work sucks. And... Well, it's hard. I think. It's hard to get good camera work in an open space. Like well, Comic Quest or something like that. Uh it's not it's not even really that because my the camera is really like my setup is real I have a really nice desktop setup and you can you can use all kinds of different angles and that kind of stuff there. I think it's more having to constantly adjust for terrain 
and distance and all that kind of stuff to get a good shot, right? And a fixed shot for Malifaux is just a pain because there's just going to be like a large, there's always going to be like a large building or a forest or something that's just like blocking something important happening all the time. So you can't really do that. You have to, yeah. you have to, you have to at least have some ability Mobility. to your, your camera angle. So, I don't know. Anything but fixed camera is crazy hard. Malfo doesn't, yeah. Yeah, agree. That's why, like, a guilt ball, if I do a guilt ball match report, um, I can, I've done this before where I've had, I've played like two or three games of guilt ball in a single day. And then that night, I have all three of the games. Um, uh, I have all three of the games uh, edited, and they're just waiting on voiceover. And I'll have voiceover done on two of them, right? And then the whole thing gets packaged out, and it's a thirty-minute video. But you get you get plenty of guild ball. There's like plenty to digest there. Um, you don't get individual dice rolls, but you don't really need individual dice rolls for guild ball. Yeah, Batman was super hard to film because the buildings are even taller in Batman and the fighting and the the engagements in Batman are even more 3D, for lack of a better term. All right. Yeah, I can see that. Should she have the dope blue or the boring blue? The art <laughs> studio the art dope has blue. the boring blue. Do the dope blue. The dope blue? Agree. Yeah. Let's do the dope blue. Yeah, I was actually just going to mention... Uh, does nice Malfo camera work. I hate it when he does guilt ball, but for Mal... Yeah, it, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was GMG, just going to mention that. You don't really watch his guilt ball reports. It's, it's great that he covers it. It's great that he covers it, but it's like guilt ball has a lot... If you want to watch Guild Ball match reports on YouTube, there's a there are a lot of other channels to be watching, right? Like Kirkhoff's channel is good. My life my life with dice is good, even though I give that guy shit for saying melee attack. Um, there's a bunch of Guild Ball channels. I don't really, full disclosure, I don't really watch Battle Reports, period. Yeah. Um, but I did watch uh, Gorilla Miniatures did a Yuko Malifo Battle Report that oh, I yeah, watched I saw that. before we started like playing just to get like a vague sense of what what's changed and what hasn't. Mm-hmm. He plays so many games, I don't think he can really get as in-depth as he need. Yeah, for sure. And I think he can play... He plays the games competently enough to get by on most of the other games that he covers. And that's great. But Guild Ball is such a precise game. And it's the best and worst thing about Guild Ball. Right? Because there's there literally is a correct way to play Guild Ball. And Malfo's that's not the case. Like Malfo you there are moves that are better than other moves, but it doesn't make it's just not as tight. Like yeah. in Guild Ball you can objectively say, Oh, well this person screwed up. There's no there's no like arguing like, no, he meant to do this and they're like, No, he yeah, that person literally screwed up that activation. Um and you can't really do that in other games and so for somebody like Ash, you know, who's trying to just play some Guild Ball, that's not it's not a great game for that. Uh, Marcus was just painful to watch when he started, but his skills dramatically improved his ability. Oh, you're talking about uh, Momentous 2 on 2, right? Yeah. Yeah, the first videos were really, really rough, but I watched them. I his 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 fixed camera work sometimes you know sometimes he just he just make a bet he'll just make a bad call 
like he was trying to do an over the shoulder camera shot and it was it was really kind of awful to watch because you know his back is in the way his back is in front of the camera the entire time and you can't see what's going on at all from the the opposing side of the field <laughs> the cool thing though is that, you know most of the creators are like you tell them like hey that's a shitty camera angle and they'll just stop using it Mm-hmm. No, no. I mean, unless you're puffing forest, and then you just double down and do something shittier. <laughs> Although puffing forest mostly does D and D vids that just highlight how he's a horrible, awful DM. And I have never yeah. watched any of this channel that you're talking about. I watched a video of it, but um. One of my friends watches it like almost religiously just to experience the shittiness. <laughs> so it shows up in my recommended like all the time because Google, Google because Google's algorithm is stalking me. It stalks you in general. Sometimes I think about that. Sometimes I think about like how many of my friends have like drag queen videos show up in their recommended and don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> Is it because, is that from your effect on the algorithm? That's just because I watch a lot of drag queen videos. Because <laughs> what YouTube does is, um, it takes what you watch and it takes what people that you, like, interact with on one of Google, what, any one of Google's services and recommends that to you as well. Interesting. So, because I watch uh, Trixie Mattel's videos on um, Wild know. Presents, it'll probably recommend videos featuring Trixie Mattel or those videos to you. Oh, no, I, I don't really get... I don't think we, we probably don't interact enough for Google to pick up on it. Because I don't, I don't get any of those um, kinds of videos. I get um, a lot of stand-up. I'll get stand-up segments, Stuff. Um, it, and then I'll get uh, what's, and then I'll get a lot of like, um, um, like indie cover band stuff. Huh. Um, it doesn't happen like all the time, but it happens like once you start figuring out like what in your friends, who in your friends group watches what, you can kind of pinpoint. Oh, okay. This stuff is from, you know, Bob. Okay. Or whatever. You going full cotton candy color? I could. I could. What is our... Uh, I could ask the client what they think. If they want to do that. that would do look, I think that would look pretty dope, honestly. Do it. Do it? Let's do it. I don't think he'll care. Worst comes to worst, he's like, oh, no, paint it black. Okay, well. I'm sorry, you're a boring human being. <laughs> also, also easy to... I'm sorry, you don't like fun. Yeah, this miniature is fantastic. My major gripe, though, is that this stupid bow prevents me from actually painting the face with any measure of skill whatsoever. It's very upsetting. Yeah, I uh, had that same problem with one of the geisha. One of them has, like, she's had has her head turned, and she's holding up a fan covering her face. Or, yeah. like, covering up the side of her face. It's like, why? What's up, Andrew? What do I mean? Nemi? Yeah, let's do let's do the same here. Let's do this pink, cause that pink is cool. Let's do that pink. It's a champagne. Hello, hello. What up? Uh, I, <laughs> I took hey Andrew. I took my kid to breakfast this morning. Took him to IHOP, which I hate, by the way. IHOP is a waste of time. Never go to IHOP. But, um. <laughs> 
But we did IHOP, and we and I ordered an English muffin because I'm weird like that. And they brought out, <laughs> they brought up all, they brought out all the gems. <laughs> and I saw grass. <laughs> Strawberry, raspberry, grass. <laughs> and I was like looking at the grass jelly. <laughs> all the jams. <laughs> The IHOP, up, I, I hope, wow. the IHOP up here is not only is it pretty good, but it's also one of two places to, to like sit down and have food. Oh. Ever since Sizzler closed. Oh no, you lost the Skizzler. I no. did. Oh, I love the Skizzler. Um, yeah. Well, we have over here. We have a Poly Pie, which is like half the cost for breakfast and it's like a lot better quality food. Mm -hmm. so I try to get my kid to go there and the wait staff knows us there so they just bring us <laughs> this is my that's my habit I just wherever I end up people just I just end up building rapport with people and they just bring me the shit that I need <laughs> I don't know if you like can't that, bring back diced. But I always, pretty much any place we we frequent, I will inevitably just end up building rapport with somebody, and they will just always bring me what I need. I'll That's never funny. forget. It's one of my minor time, powers, I think. I'll never forget the time in between us gaming at Game Masters and us gaming at CQ. We used to go to that Thai place and get boba. Mm -hmm. And the first time we went in there, you asked, do you have boba? And this, like, elderly Asian man was like, do we have boba? He <laughs> <laughs> was, like, almost offended that you asked. <laughs> Are you talking about Guac the Betrayer? No. Okay, not I'm so talking good. about, um... It was the other one. It was the one that's, like, across from the place where I get pokey now. Oh, you're talking about... Fu ninety nine or whatever. Yeah, the place that you could tell was like genuine because it had a number in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do we hit bomba? They got mad that, at me. That is like the weirdest response ever. It was pretty so, amazing. So apparently, I decided not to build rapport there. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, man. Dice was the best. I missed that. Part. Yeah. I, I just my... want to know what happened. I missed my girl. They fired her. Like, I just want to know what happened to, like, this store. Because, like... Oh, no. <laughs> After that, I think I couldn't give a shit about that place once they fired her. I was like, never mind. <laughs> this is well, it was weird. like, one week I went down there and they were closed because it was 4th of July. <laughs> then, week I went, uh, then the next week I went down there and I was like, oh, we're putting in a pizza place. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dude. There was... I was going... I was going there one day during the summer. And I ran into her right outside... The, right outside the restaurant. I said hi to her. And she's like, oh, hey, hope everything goes well. And I'm like, what's going on? She's like, yeah, they, they fired me. I'm not working here anymore. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Why did they fire you? I'm like, you're the best person that works in this in the, the whole joint I'm like yeah it, she's the only one that takes care of me there right mm -hmm. and she's like Sorry. yeah they fired me I'm gonna go work someplace else and after that I was like this place is fucking dead to me <laughs> much <laughs> and then I just hashtag not my older girl yeah I was like nah you can't fire her. You know how loyal she was to me? She'd follow me out in the parking lot to get me my shit. Like, like you can't you can't deny that level of loyalty. I was like, damn. Not me? Yeah. So, <laughs> so after that, that place was you know, like, nope. Sure. That place is dead to me. She would turn down. And then like, I was really dead. Were, were you there the night that, that, like, there was, like, 20 dudes outside that showed up, like, towards the end of the night, and she's, like, she walked past them all, and she's, like, 
sorry guys, out of boba. And they're like, ah, oh. and they turned around and she's like, she and she pointed at me. She's like, no, not you. <laughs> she got me boba. I was like, yes. No, not you. I'm like, I can't turn away from this. She's too loyal. <laughs> That's funny. And then the place just died. Yeah. I don't know how or I'll why. I'll myself for taking that shit down. Like, that was not okay. How how dare you fire her? It's the best. <laughs> I mean, I think you're giving yourself a little too much credit, but okay. Yeah, I know, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so how many jams do they have, huh? <laughs> how many jams? What up, man? Yo, what up, guys? No. Ah. What color should her little belt be? Pink. <laughs> should it be pink. What's your main color? Agreed. And the shoes too. Yes. Yeah, man. Pink hair. Don't care. So we're just making her the full. Unless you want that leather white belt. Nah. It's kind of boring, though. It's like I was gonna do black, but black is kind of boring. That's true. Actually, black actually makes more sense. But does it? Does it really, though? Yeah, it does. It makes more sense. I think black is what I need to do here. Sadly. You're boring. I'm boring. I'll, I'll, I'll accept You're that. You're boring, boomer. Oh. Damn. Dang. Hit him like that. I'm an Fuck. Xer, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you're a zoomer. Oh. <laughs> So I tried to get a like one of those Popeyes chicken sandwiches. Yeah, did but you get one? Still sold yeah. out, I think, right? Oh yeah, they've been selling out for a while. But I'm like, how do you run out of bread and chicken? Like, what? How? What? How? I'll never forget. Um, God, was it with you, Octave? We were at Strategic Con, and we went over to the Carl's Jr. because that's like the only thing you do it's at Strategic Con. Yeah, it's the only thing there. Um. And I ordered the Chris cut fries, and the lady was like, "Oh, sorry, well, I'll order those French fries." I'm like, what the fuck is the point then? Yeah, you're like, how do you run out of potato? <laughs> like, that's what I'm wondering. I'm like, it's the sandwich is the same chicken that they put in everything else, right? And then it's just bread and maybe some mayonnaise and some pickles. All right, that's it. <laughs> I don't understand why they run out on me. We have a Popeyes up here, and that place is like almost always busy. Yeah, and I don't understand it. The Popeyes here is always pretty busy. Yeah, but it's the only one for like miles, right? Yeah. Do you remember, hey Mark? Do you remember that? Speaking of that, Carl's. Do you remember when that that like the security guard like was when he was our hero yeah we were just sitting there for two hours and we were doing hell dorado shit it was like hey what's this guy's order <laughs> <laughs> he like went back Wait, there what? and got our order and handed it to us that's was like, shit was hey, legendary man, what did you order like and i was like uh this this is what i ordered and the guy like w walked behind the counter and got our order and brought it back I remember, um, and he was the security guard, and we're like, "What the hell is this guy doing?" I remember the weekend of one of one anime expo. We uh, were waiting for one of my friends from Oregon's flight to come in, and I went to that Carl's Jr. thinking, "All right, I'll just grab like you know a bottle of water and some French fries or something," because we were just sitting in the parking lot, and. Um, that place was still busy. Like, it was strategic on levels of busy there. But it did it have the security guard that went back and got your shit for you? 
It didn't have the security guard. It was just a bunch of, like, tourist people who undoubtedly were, like, coming from or going to the airport. Mm. I'm pretty sure that uh, security guard thought that I was, like, the leader of Fight Club or something. That's where you were, Helderado, dude. (laughs) I missed that game. (laughs) Even if somebody got kind of spurgy about it. (laughs) Oh, lordy. Dang. This is... Oh, I love... She's just such a great mini. Damn it. Love this mini. Mm-hmm. Got about the Wu Tang clan, man. I know. I would do I would do yellow and black as an outfit for her. There's a documentary on the Wu Tang clan on uh Hulu. It's like I shouldn't say documentary. I it was but Netflix. it's like Is Hulu? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's, it's Hulu. on Hulu. No, it's Hulu. Yeah. Did you watch it? Yeah, it's I Hulu. have not. My wife told me about it today, so I was like, oh. I am not that. I don't know to watch it. Yeah, I'm not that invested in the Wu-Tang Clan. I sort of am, so I'll watch it. Yeah. (laughs) Like a 100% investment. It's more like, this is kind of interesting. This is morbid curiosity. I mean, I did buy their their kung fu video game back when that was a thing. I... Was watching uh, this show on Travel Channel called uh, Mountain Monsters. Mm-hmm. I was completely fascinated by it because oh, it's I about... know this is about hillbillies in, in yeah. Virginia, right? I watched that. The Appalachian yeah. hillbillies in Virginia who act yeah. exactly like you would expect. Yeah, but they hunt for like monsters and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like I some of it is obviously fake. But I genuinely believe that they believe that they're hunting for Bigfoot, just knowing, like, the kind of people from that area. Yes. <laughs> like, they did this whole storyline where they're chasing some woman in the woods in some place called the Dark Forest in West Virginia, and it just got, like, too hokey. You know, like at one point, somebody in a mask shows up in one of the dude's trucks, looks at him, and the dude puts down his camera, gets in the truck, and they just disappear. (laughs) And at one point, somebody's like hiding in a car because he's hurt, and you know, two of his friends are going out to go do something, and somebody shows up in like a forklift and flips the car he's in over. (laughs) And it's like, that is. What? (laughs) Yeah, it got wild. And then they find this barn, and this dude is like, this is where they took me. You know, this is where we were. And, you know, this is where they, because they pulled, like, a skull out of one of the dude's noses. Mm. And it's like, this is where they put that thing in your nose, and, you know, stuff like that. And there's just this obviously faked, overproduced video. They played on a film reel that was, like, some secret society that they inspired were, you know, giving them the chance to find the legend of the spear finger mm. and shit. And it's like, this is obviously fake, but these people fascinate me. I still, yeah. <laughs> these people are just fascinating creatures Did they to me. ever make The Man with the Iron Fist 2? I never saw uh, it. Yes, they I did. Need, I need to watch that. Because <laughs> I am invested in Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> no matter what weird shit they come up I actually did like the man with the iron fist the first one I thought it was cool the lowest marks ever but it was semi interesting like, for what I it didn't was care. it was like it was literally like watching a shitty kung fu movie from the 60s but it starred it starred actors from the 2000s on it That was like Russell Crowe's comeback film. <laughs> was that movie? That is unfortunate. Yeah, there was a second version of it. It was so bad. <laughs> I was like, I don't care, man. This That's like the how they're like. The RZA has made a movie. I need to watch it. 
<laughs> it's like how there's like five crow movies. Yeah. None of them are really worth watching. That is true. Dang, I she's ah, oh, she's great. I still like her. Still found like the crow movies kind of fun and interesting. Well the first crow movie is really good. Yeah. Um but I don't even think the other crow movies got theatrical releases. I think they're just straight to DVD. Yeah, they're kind of straight to DVD. I know there's one of them with uh, David Boreanaz and um, Tara Strong that is absolute garbage. Yeah. Which is a shame because, you know, you've got you got David Boreanaz and they're acting as like the like basically the Antichrist who's going to bring about the end of the world or something. Mm. And he's like he's bringing his, his best to it. He's doing a great job. But he has to play with Tara Strong as his like partner in crime. And they try and cast her as a badass, crazy, like action girl. Yeah. That's like that's not that's not at all believable. You got uh, who played the crow in that movie? I do not remember. I don't know it was somebody who was like really bad. Ginger? Um or blonde. Those are your choices. Ginger or blonde. It was Edward Furlong. That's it. He's neither. He's neither ginger. A or young or Edward Furlong played the crow, and it's Tara Reed, not Tara Strong. Not even Danny Trejo could and Dennis Hopper could save that movie. And that's saying something, because Dennis Hopper's character in The Crow Wicked Pair is kind of fucking amazing. He plays this, like, so. pimp guy who weds um, David Boreanaz's character and Tara Reid. Mm-hmm. But it's just saying you may now kiss the bro- or like, you know, I now pronounce you man and wife, so like, I now pronounce you the devil and his shorty. Yeah. Yeah. No thoughts? Blonde, ginger. Blonde. This is pride, by the way. I mean, if I was going the other direction, I would have just made it slash. But you know, that's just me. Oh, yeah. Black. yeah. But mm, facial hair kind of th- throws it off. You can go. You can go blonde. He looks like a kind of like. More of like a Skinner type personality. Nice and Skinner, man. Make him yeah. a JoJo character. It's fine. Yeah. Oh God. Hey, what I character to... was that? What a what a what a what a. The um, way that. Uh... I mean, he could have. I don't know. I just think he. I I think if your name is Pride, then you should have bright hair. You should have blonde hair, or you should have ginger hair. Make right. him from the land of the Dan Webbers. I know. I'm. I think. I think he should. I think he should be ginger hair. Do it or blonde. Put on the. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can figure out. Any comments from ginger. the from uh, the YouTube uh, audience? I should have uh, it's about the crow. What? <laughs> the, the most recent one is about the crow. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was part four villains. Yeah. I tried watching JoJo's. Just buzzing for me. That's the thing. It's a show that certain arcs are for other arcs really aren't. Well, it's like I've seen a lot of stuff from it. It looks like it has a lot of those shonen style over the top action scenes and I don't really like those. Yeah. Like for me, stuff like Tokyo Ghoul has kind of broken the shonen spell. Mm. Where it's like, we can have really great action scenes that don't take eight freaking episodes to get over. And we can also have really interesting characters. I think, Even if the anime does piss away most of the potential in those characters, but... I think the reason why I like this is because of... <laughs> the boundaries of most and um, out of most an- animes like 
especially nowadays where everything's just so slice of life or you know sports based or something yeah. along those lines it's definitely unique it's just not for me uh it's akira atoshi purple hair <laughs> purple okay. yes that's a color it's like a lavender purple do you just what happens what is this okay what are this what okay sure atoshi pride screams lion mane to me so golden blonde okay fair enough we're doing it but yeah Brondi. Uh, just just blonde i agree with that blonde has anyone else played that new fire emblems game I know I, a bunch of people that have played it, but I haven't touched it. I have tried to play just about every Fire Emblem game that I release, and I always get bored. This game has consumed part of my life. <laughs> Is this it, the reason why we don't not, see you often? <laughs> in a matter of a week, I have put 30 hours into this damn game. Oh, Jesus. And I played other Fire Emblem games, and like Mark, I have gotten bored at one point, right? But I don't know what the hell they did on this one. Like, once that uh, you know, you open up, you open up the seal, and all the crack powder comes out. <laughs> yeah, and I was like reading the back of the game to my sister, right? And I'm like, wow, this sounds dumb as fuck, right? And then I'm like, oh wait, I don't know if we're allowed to cuss, but whoops, like I was like, wow, this sounds really dumb, like. And then I played it? Oh my god! <laughs> That's it's gonna like, be me once the, uh, once Borderlands 3 comes out. Yeah. It's gonna it's fall true. off the face of the world. Nobody's gonna hear anything from me. Yeah. Like, like you remember like, Mark? Yeah, where is he? <laughs> It'll be like three weeks later and I'll still be in my rooms playing Borderlands 3. Oh, yeah, but no, I'm, I'm afraid of picking up Borderlands because I know that I like games. I have been a Borderlands fan since Borderlands 1 came out. Yeah. And I have been like, I'm a little bit let down that I have to wait a year to buy Borderlands 3 on PC because yeah. I am not installing the Epic installer. Yep. I, oh, I I'm so upset about time, that yeah. too. I think that was a really bad move was yeah so you yeah. have to oh sorry uh if, actually, you have to, oh whoops my bad times two <laughs> i'm scared now <laughs> oh whoops. no no go for it i was just gonna explain like that the like i don't know why borderlands made you have to install the epic games installer to play their game which is it's just such a dumb move mm -hmm. yeah yeah sorry, go for it Mark. my bad so well, I would be fine if it was on any launcher other than the Epic launcher. Because that thing is just certifiable malware, pretty much. Alright, Mark, what's your favorite Borderlands character? Ah, oh, that's rough. I want to say... It's kind of a three-way tie. Between Moxie, Gage, and Lil Lilith. Yeah, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. I really like uh, Lilith's arc in two. That and is true. Where she becomes like the Phoenix. That's a good one. Yeah, like she kind of like how she kind of goes from being this like yeah whatever you know let's do this like it'll be cool to like taking up a leadership role. After uh, the big twist, about halfway yeah, yeah. through the game, I also wow, really like Angel. Angel's really cool too. The game has such good writers. Yeah. yeah. It's this highly true. Yeah, Angel, I think, was probably. Well, I mean, I don't want... Yeah, never mind, I'm not going to say anything. Because <laughs> it's spoilers. But, I mean, the game is super old. So, like, I think mm -hmm. we can dive into, like, minor spoiler territory. Like, Girl. I mean, yeah. I was pretty shocked at, what, like, how they... Who Angel truly was. There we go. 
Yeah, the bit, I still remember the first time I played through Borderlands 2 and got to that the part where you get to the bunker and she shows herself to you and it's just... Oh, it was such a great moment. Yeah. And I also really like uh, the villains for for uh, Borderlands 3, the Calypso twins. Because mm. they're like really hyper-obnoxious hyper streamers, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, what's his name? Uh, the head of Gearbox during when they were showing off like some footage for it, they said that their inspiration for Troy and uh, and um, Calypso his twins? sister, yeah, the inspiration were like really hyper annoying, yeah, uh, really like in your face, like swag. We're so cool, streamers. Mm -hmm. I am 1000% on board for that. You know, the, the streamers that we hate are now portrayed as Borderland characters. Yeah. Yeah, it's just fucking great. When the Troy's Lions is like... Handsome. It's like gods don't say please or something like that. Yeah. Well, that's a smart way to go for villains, honestly. Yeah. You're not going to be able to talk. You're not going to be able to have, like, a handsome Jack again. Yeah. No. Nope. Like you've all, once you have like a handsome Jack villain like that, you can't play it again, or else you're just kind of you're just beating the same drum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I like the fact that they took like the streamer idea because for the most part, they're like idolized. Like even in game characters, like Diva. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. It's it's like dude. She's so annoying, but somehow people are like, "Oh my god!" Well, Diva's backstory is actually really interesting. Really, I did not get yeah. into that. So, Diva acts the way that she does specifically because uh, Korea was basically torn apart during the um, during the big machine war, and she kind of took it upon herself to be like the brave face of um, Korea that distracted everybody from the fact that their lives were ruined. Hmm. So there, there's more to that character than a lot of people kind of realize. Yeah. You know, it was so weird um, like going through some of the characters, but... Well, Tiny Tina kind of actually actually became my favorite, and I don't usually gravitate towards the obnoxious kid character that you're just like, oh my gosh, just stay over there and don't say anything, child. Well, the D and D DLC D and D arc. campaign is the thing that ended up winning me over in her. Yeah, Cause yeah, because I was Clint like, game, okay. They're like, oh, she's just lol XD, so random. And then you play the D&D campaign. It's like, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> it just makes so much sense how she is and the stuff that she comes up with. And I'm like, you know what? You're actually not a bad character. There's a side quest in, um, in Borderlands 2 where you find out that Jack basically murdered her parents in front of her. It's uh, it's in an audio log, and it, it's like, oh, it's yeah, you're and right. She says, like, remember that rock I gave you, Tina? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. God, this could be good. In a lot of ways, I'm kind of excited for her to come back in Borderlands 3. That person? <laughs> Did anyone uh, Malifo this weekend? We did. Uh, yes, yeah. today. It was brutal. Ooh, you should let me know. I was like just running random errands and stuff. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, it was, it shit. was semi brutal. Well, who played what? Turn <laughs> one. Seamus got like plugged in the face real hard. <laughs> That's not fun. Yeah, I played, uh, I played Showgirls into Seamus. Oh! <laughs> and it was bad. 
and <laughs> went into Sheamus with the, the, the duet and uh and with like doubling double severing on the negative flips. Oh god. <laughs> Just wrecked him pretty hard. Yeah. He was on like there one got- health until turn three or something. He got blender sliced and then pulled underneath the earth. Oh no. <laughs> it's just like, what just happened? That is like just so heartbreaking sometimes. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. That red Joker just came out of nowhere. I'm like, I, what? No. <laughs> I didn't red Joker him. I you read, you read, read Joker on one thing. I read Joker when the bird attacked a bell and killed a bell. Oh. I read Joker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The dove said, Kah! Yeah. <laughs> Just went on a bell and blew up a bell. Kah! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You pulled nothing but high cards on, like, the first turn. Yeah, well... At the yeah, at the end of the first turn, I went into Seamus, ripped him with a bunch of high cards, and then Seamus red jokered on Colette, Ooh. and had Colette, Colette went down to two health, Ooh. and then uh, and then super heel bot McHeel face went in and yeah. healed her all the way back up to like eight. <laughs> like no way. Way. Dang that healing bot. <laughs> Oh, yeah, is that the mechanical attendant? Yeah, the yeah. Healy McHealbot, like, brought that shit back. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty nuts, man. <laughs> but it was a cool game. Um, I just, it's been a while since I fielded a Corfi duet. And I was like, ah, let's take one. Mm-hmm. And see what it does. And it do great. Do things. It do terrible things. But it cool. do things. Yeah. Are you going to main Seamus uh, now, Blade Wolf? I'm s- mostly practicing with Seamus right now. Um, I'm still trying to figure out Rasputina, and I think once the new box actually comes out for Rasputina, okay, okay. Uh, then I may double back in order to see if I can get my, you know, December Acolytes and some of the other stuff in to do work. But Seamus isn't bad. Like, honestly, I'm having fun with Seamus. I had to get the grave diggers so that I have like a healing and um corpse marker display. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing to do and that's it. Yeah, I I was like I said, I was fully planning on playing some Karis today. And then I was like, nah. Yeah, but your girl. Man. I gotta I like I miss my girls. Yep. I played Seamus in my like I mean not Seamus, um I played Karis in like my my more recent game. So I was like, oh, I'm cool. No, yeah, it's, uh... Oh no, go for it, go for it. I was saying it's kind of the main reason why I'm like picking up some of the uh, mortuary type figures because I even thought about picking up Mortimer in case, especially for the game that we played today where it's um, the the pieces around on the board in order to gain points. Mortimer is pretty awesome. Love Mortimer. Yeah, he's the Using the unexpected zombie thing is probably what I need so that they can do all the heavy work while I'm markers around. Surprise, it's a zombie. Zombies. 
I think, was that one character for Rezzers, Asura Rotten or something like that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's pretty dope, I think, for a couple of, um, like, I don't remember, like, she does some neat stuff. I, I haven't looked into her card in a while. I like, like, the idea behind her, I just hate her model. Mm. Fair. Like, the pose yeah. that she specifically is in is so stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I still really want to pick up a a Riva crew. But I would need to buy that box set that has the uh the big head and the flaming wheel. Oh <laughs> you know, the guy's like I'm on fire. <laughs> yeah. J- un- upset uncle. Yeah. His whole just scheme in life is that he's on fire. Yep. <laughs> just burning. He's the burning. Always burning. Yeah, dude. He's the burninator. Yeah. I think I want. Once I That's figure out. Patch. Oh yeah. Once I figure out, um, like how to correctly play the Vix, I think yeah. I'm gonna end up maining those guys. Yeah. They're pretty strong. They're pretty strong, and like I mean. My first game with them, I kind of knew what I was doing, but I feel like there's a, a little bit more trickage that I can, yeah, mm-hmm. I can get out there. Cause I was like trying to solve puzzles, but solving them poorly. <laughs> but like freaking wedge deployment with Vix is just, is yeah. just so brutal. Like fuck, they just the entire crew just dumps on your face immediately. <laughs> it's actually insane because like Vanessa can get to the half point line if you do wedge deploy and then she's already just like destroying stuff or yeah. you move up one vic teleport the other and then just wreck face mm-hmm. they are just so strong like compared to lady j i think she she just doesn't have anything on them mm-hmm. besides being guild i mean like yeah, yeah. that's kind of how it was in um 1.5. If you knew how to play the Vix, you could outplay most Lady J's crews yeah, pretty sure. easily. Yeah, because I mean, like, don't get me wrong, the Scales of Justice is in, like one of my favorite totems, but you cannot beat having two masters. Like, how that's just free activations, and they can activate off each other. And they have so Whoa. much. Uh, they have so much AP efficiency too. When you trigger yeah. to make another guy attack. Yeah, like, that was like there were like eight attacks happening, at, at, like in a chain, like in that game that we played. Like, oh, okay, one Vic is gonna go. Okay, she triggers. Let's get another attack by that guy, and another attack, and then oh, let's discard a card. Then here's the other Vic going. Oh, look, she triggered again. Make another attack. It's like yeah. it was like yeah, eight attacks, and- easy. Their um, stats are seven, so yeah. it's like holy corrupt. Like, like you- if you were to if if it was Taylor taking that bonus attack each time, yep. that's eight attacks with you know stat seven across the board, min three damage. That's yep. that's not okay. That's that's not right. What the actual fuck. Yeah. So like. They have one of the abilities on their swords, one of the triggers. I think it's the mask or the crow. Uh, it's called like that one was mine. It just basically makes someone else attack like for free. Ow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty disgusting. Yeah. And, and like, and if that other person is Taylor, yep, <laughs> then it's just not okay. even right. Yeah, because Taylor also has like I think she ignores shielding or something like that. Um. And like you said, min damage three. Min damage like, three, stat seven. Like that's yep. crazy. That's impressive. That's just like it, it's like too much to watch for. <laughs> yeah. You do not and have I... the cards to handle that. Your shit will get wrecked if you if you're in there. It's it's pretty insane, and I mean, like, their guns are actually good, too. 
And yeah. if they're far apart from each other, their guns are good. It. They have shielding. You've got um, healing available to them. Um, they get the free push in the in the start phase. Like they they seem to be really complete. Yeah, and Although, Vanessa. Oh, good. Oh, sorry. Uh, Vanessa with the AOE heal is just huge mm-hmm. because you plan on clumping up, yeah. like. I can see some counters for them though. They're just it's just not easy. Yeah, if you can kill a Vic or Vanessa early, uh you're sitting in a good spot. Like if turn 1 you can kill a Vic or or I mean more realistically you're going to be able to kill Vanessa cuz she's not a henchman. But it's still not the easiest thing out there. Like she has some defense tech. Mhm. But yeah, I mean those prospect does bang. Yeah. They are so good. <laughs> and there are only three mortuary models. This is that surprising. Weird. Uh with Nico being like dead, that kinda makes sense, honestly. Mm. Oh. Poor Nicodermus. Poor Nicoderm. So Nicoderm no dies, but Rasputuna gets to live. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Rasputuna. <laughs> Look at this dude. Play some Skinner, man. <laughs> this guy's awesome. Yeah. Definitely gonna need to get Mortimer and some zombies. Yeah, there's a lot of versatile in Rezzers, I think. Yeah. The Rogue Necromancy, if you could take that. It's versatile. Mm hmm. Really want to build a Molly Crew. Do it, man. Versatile. I'm building my Molly crew right now, but uh, I got my package with Brian and Bone, and then I look in there, and I'm like, wait, they said they're sending me Archie, and then I look at the paper, and they're like, Archie's back ordered. I'm like, no! <laughs> I'm like, shit, man. Yeah, that was a big oof right there, because I was like, I mean, it makes sense. Everyone who bought Brian and Bone probably bought Archie, and they were just like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rebel Rouser. Fuck off. <laughs> There's spunk zombies and you know it. Yeah, I think the Seamus crew, I'm just gonna stick to what what he has plus, like, the grave diggers. Uh, I feel like I need extra models in order to offset the of their abilities. Or at least heavy hitters. Yeah. Luckily I got the... What was it? Snowstorm? Well, sorry. Speaking, sorry, of, camera. speaking of raspy. Anybody else working on anything in the chat? Let us know what your project is. We're working on Crossroad 7. This is Envy. He's being sad without his thing. No organ. No organ yet. He needs a microphone. Mic drop. Paint the organ separately. Yeah, I um, I most want to build a Molly crew because I still have metal Molly. Mm Hmm. And that is just the best Molly model out there. Yeah. I do like the metal Molly. I mean, the Bind and Bone Molly is pretty cool too, but. It's not Metal Molly. Metal Molly is just, like, pretty dope. Mm. Holy fuck. Somebody's selling a dead Justice crew for $134? Mm. Damn. Fuck. I need to Nanny? sell my dead Justice crew. The hell is dead Justice? It was. It is the first. Uh, Nightmare Crew. 
Yep, it's true. It's um, it's Lady Justice, but she's like undead and ha- and um, has her head removed. Oh. And back in the day, you could use her as Lady Justice, or she was a um, dead doxy. Yeah, dead doxy. Let me, let me, let me do. I'm looking at it right now. It's a pretty dope box. Like the dead judge is cool too. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. That's all right. That's really not right. Smash another cone. But yeah. I got one of them. Yeah. I just go to the side. That does not match. What the fuck? That doesn't match. Okay, yeah. A small yeah. portion of me does in the long run. Once I play around with Rasputini a bit more, probably add um, Marcus into the crew. At least for... This sounds really bad, but at least for um, uh, yeah, her speed is cool. ridiculous. Wait, yeah. you would take Marcus as a second Masters? Hey, what's up, Kevin? Maybe it's a maybe. I would go the other way personally. I think that's like Marcus is the main master in the Marcus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. it's kind of like, um, Secondary it's better, master. it's not like it's better if you take Masaki as a secondary master into Yuko as opposed to the other way around. No, I'm saying like buying that particular master. <clears throat> oh. No, screw. Oh, oh, okay. Then that's actually really nice because then, yeah, because you have a, the, those two masters complement each other pretty well. And yeah. you have you have a little bit of crossover with the Slate Ridge Mauler uh, mm. and the Horcats. Yeah. Hey Andrew. And bless you. Yes. Uh do you happen to remember how much that Brian and Bones crew was? Fifty like, damn I think. Oh. Fifty or sixty. I have the receipt actually. I can go grab it. Fuck that, alright. I was just looking at one on eBay, and it's like eighty-five. It's like fuck that. I'll just I'll just wait until the next event. Like yeah, Christmas it's is a, coming. It is a dope box, it, but um, eighty eighty-five die right now with. Yeah, yeah. I um, I thought for sure you were getting one, Mark. I was going to, but when it, but that weekend I kind of didn't really have that much spending money. Oh, got gotcha. you. So it was like, fuck. But you know, I'll just I'll just wait until like Christmas or something, or maybe how they'll have it out on Halloween. Mm. That'd be dope. That's I don't true. think they do the Halloween events because they're boring, but <laughs> they should. We should do Stoneween. Dude, we should bring back Stoneween. <laughs> no one will understand what the hell we're talking about. So we will. Attack. You'll see. And that's all that matters. <laughs> I wonder if we just put out there on the internet if, like, Jake will just appear. <laughs> he shows up for <laughs> Stoneween. And he just tees up, TOs it. No, this is my event. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like Beetlejuice who says Stoneween three times, he shows up. <laughs> that would be funny. God. Is um, is Chris gonna come down and game with us in the oh, near future? Oh, you was right, man. I need to follow up with Chris. We gotta call him up. We gotta we gotta make it the the meeting of the YouTube minds. We do have to call up this. All game. the more, all the more reason to make Sonoween happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he'll know what we're talking about. I just want the karaoke parties again, man. Like, can we can we? <laughs> ah. If we could I'll like, never. send my kids to grandma's house or something for the night, then yes. Something like I'll that. I'll never forget I'll never forget Krampus knock. Yes. I still have that Krampus statue. You still have the Krampus statue. That's awesome. 
I think I won but that primarily because I was the only motherfucker playing Ten Thunders. For, like, the longest time. Yeah. This is true. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Why we always gotta get the boring one? Why is this boring? But he has a dope, at least he's got the dope mech thing. Yeah, he's got the cool spider walker. Yeah. He got the he got the dopest Shit. instrument. That's true. But his little bowler hat's not happy. I guess he kinda looks like a he looks like a Heisenberg a little bit. <laughs> like a breaking bad. I think we all know what the true Heisenberg is uh Jacob Lynch. Yeah. 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 I actually wanted a Jacob Lynch crew so badly, but I was like, oh, the money. <laughs> I've got like three Ten Thunders Masters, and I have a fourth one that I could paint up. Yeah. Kevin, you painting anything, man? Painting up that, painting up that foe, man. Oh, by the way, I did you get my message about Jose? Who might be watching? You watching Jose? What the hell, man? Just get. St why? Why are you not on Facebook, Jose? That's what I want to know. What? Oh, the government can see you, Jose. Who is looking for you? Man? Can I just? I'm sorry to say, that Jose, but you are not that interesting. Jose, who is looking for you? This is. I can't, oh, I spent. I spent the year Y2K underneath a bank, Jose. Who is interested in you? Seriously. Come but on. if you look at his life and all the misfortunes, <laughs> I can see why he thinks that. Jesus. I mean, Scully oh, catching God. some some form of god awful pneumonia in the Philippines. Oh. Like that was that was the government trying to cat him right there. Me, you know, saw, okay, that was the you know what? No government. You might actually be right. You might be right. He, he, Maybe there is some dark force. Around that poor maybe, man. Yeah, me. I I don't know. Maybe he was sent to spy on me. Who knows? <laughs> the Philippines. Maybe it's trying to bring him you back. To spy on me. <laughs> and there's like a whole secret subplot going on. Lord. <laughs> no, actually, you 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 do make a solid point there, Andrew. Maybe people is out to get him. I mean, like, how can he be late? To a con? Like, what traffic? <laughs> oh, to like, Comic Con? Or, like, like wasn't he late or something like that? And yeah, they were waiting? He, he, it was, um, it was preview night at Comic Con. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, like, night. why would they be traffic? And we like, had it it's all preview lined night. Up, and Little Miss Scully was following me around the entire night. And we had it, like, and we just kept, like, where the hell's Jose? What's going on? I'm, like, sending him pictures of her flipping him off. And then, uh, yeah, and he doesn't get down there till like eleven o'clock. And I swear the dude left his house at like five. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, that was some government work right there. Like, I hear the stories of the things that go on in his life, and I mean, like, you would think there's an external force. Oh no. <laughs> Oh man, it was, it was, yeah, we tried, we tried, it's, that's all I'm saying, Nelson, we tried. Dang. I think the last time I rolled up late to, uh, pretty much every time I've showed up late to a convention has been at Kingdom Con. You can't ever actually is... be late for Kingdom Con. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, it's true. Technically, I remember you, one year. when you show up to Kingdom Con is when you show up to Kingdom Con. Nobody's ever considered late for Kingdom Con. I remember one year I got it doing a bunch of henchman work because I got strep throat. Oh, right. That was fun. Oh, gosh. I had a moment to, and I, for the weekend, I just became salty from uh, the rah-rah-rah. <laughs> 
Gosh darn it. Did you have to wear a bike helmet? I didn't. But that was the year that... That dude's car got fucked up in the parking lot. What? Who is it? Is that Marsh? It might have been. That dude? I just remember that, like, a tour bus ran into Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that car. was Marsh. A tour Damn. bus yeah. hit his car. And just destroyed it. Dang. Okay, that's a legitimate excuse not to meet Scully. If a tour bus hits your, hits your, uh, hits your car. Yeah, but, I mean, five-hour traffic. I don't know about that. Five hours? <laughs> I know! Five-hour so, traffic to get to San Diego we, on Wednesday, okay? Preview night is the reason why we... It's one of the only reasons why I ever did the show. is because I wasn't interested in going to Comic-Con, but preview night was great because, like, wasn't but, as many people, and you get the exclusives, you get to do all the shit you actually should be doing at Comic-Con. And then you get to have, talk to people. Yeah, then you don't have to worry about fucking Saturday. Like you didn't, you could just skip it entirely. And be like, yeah. yeah, whatever. I already did preview night. I already did like everything I need to do at Comic Con. And because, and specifically because there wasn't really any like traffic or anything. <laughs> like I got there. Shoot. Well, I usually go uh, when I used to work Comic Con. I would pick up my badge. Uh, I'd pick it up Wednesday at like, like right around noon <clears throat> because they, they, they always used to say, oh yeah, we we don't actually, we're not going to start distributing badges till like three would, that was a super lie. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you just get in line. Yeah. Everybody knew it was a lie. Like you just get in line and then there'd be this big ass line and you'd be like, shit, I got to be in this big ass line for like three hours. But then they would just like. Within half an hour, they would start letting people in and just giving them badges. But you yeah. couldn't walk the... You, you, it, um, it's true that you couldn't actually walk the um, the, the, the floor. main floor until, I think, mm. like 5 or 6 o'clock. Right, Sean? Yes. Yep. So you had all this time. Like, you would go... So we would go... That year, she met me there, I want to say... Pretty much like right after I got my badge, and we had like lunch. We had we had like our whole day. We had lunch. We hang out. We went like we went to. Um, we were hanging up, hanging out in the the upstairs area, whatever the parasail area. Um, and then and then the floor open. Still no Jose. We walked around. I bought a bunch of pins and shit. Um. She bought me, she bought me, um, what'd she get, like, I think I got, like, an umbrella badge or something. She bought me, she brought me, she bought me, a, a, like, one of those patches or something. And then, um, and still no Jose. And then. Wait, so did you guys carpool, you and Scully? No, she just met me there. So how did both of you guys get there? Yeah. And not hit any of this god awful traffic that Jose is talking about. <laughs> Yet I somehow do. Jose is magically in five hour LA traffic, which is like unheard of. Yeah. Like five hour two, LA traffic. Two hour LA traffic, I could believe. Five hour LA traffic. He's man. gonna watch this. Back. I could believe five hour like LA traffic. In comments. I mean, it is in possible. The comment section. It is possible. I think the last time I heard of something like that happening was when, like, One Direction or something LA, right? was doing a concert at the same night. Something like that. There that you know? or, you, or you take the five out of L.A. I think it was Gail was telling me, like, oh, she, cause I, I told her the story because I fucking tell everybody the story. <laughs> but oh, God. I, t- <laughs> I was telling Gail the story, and she's like, yeah, there was actually one year where uh, where I was trying to get down there at the same time there was like a One Direction concert happening. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And she, oh, to, good luck. Yeah. Do you remember the WonderCon where nobody knew where we were supposed to get our badges from? That was like like the second WonderCon or something? 
Yeah, like, none of the staff knew where we're supposed to get their badges from. Yeah. Is this uh, WonderCon or uh, Anaheim? Anaheim. Yeah. And, and um, you want to know the, the reason why that happened? Because the staff are stupid. <laughs> two people said <laughs> two different things. Like, I was told, like, three different things. Yeah, uh, we were running all over that con. I remember that. They I had the, the big... <laughs> I had the big, uh, the trunk that had all, like, the Malifo train and stuff in it. Yeah. Huh. And at one point, it was either go through the con floor, hmm. or, like, go all the way around, oh. and go through this other entrance, and Scooter's like, no, I can't let you do that. It's like, I have, like, a helper pass. Like, no, that expired, like, two minutes ago. It's like, oh, dude, really? And, and feel it's like... like <sighs> And I had found me. Or luckily, that year. Luckily, what happened was Laura, Laura Egger, who kind of oh, yeah, disappeared. She in, right? uh, yeah, she yeah. got me in. She got her dad's pass, and I used that. That's right. <laughs> to I, get into okay, the con totally floor. Yeah. <laughs> to get my own pass, <laughs> and I went. We went to where they told us, said, oh no, we don't have it here. I guess we went to this place upstairs. Oh no, we don't have it here. Oh, and then when I'm on my way to the third place that I was told, Octave God was like, yeah, dude, we finally found the passes. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I know exactly where the pass setting... Yeah, so, I remember that. So here. Nelson says he was in 3-hour traffic from Santa Monica to Mission Viejo. Santa Monica oh. Beach to Mission Viejo. That's, I, okay, I buy that. Two yeah, hours, I buy that too. Two hours? Wait, wait. Nelson, we're not talking about two hours, man. We're talking about, like, let's see, he, I think he left at 5. He didn't get to San Diego till 11. So we're talking <clears> six <throat> hours, dude. Six six hours. Yeah, how is that how possible? Do get, how does, and and he could he could, he could have cut across the 15 to come down. He could have gone, you know, the, he had multiple routes, essentially. I don't know how it takes six hours to go from, uh, unless both, um, yeah, you'd have to shut down either both freeways or you'd have to shut down the five and the seventy six. But even yeah. if you, even if it was just the five and the seventy six, you could still cut around. Yeah, I I think. Wait, can't you take the PCH down too? You can. You can take. Um, I don't know. That I'm not sure because I know you could take the, the PCH to San Fran. That sounds right, but I don't know. Yeah, to put it into perspective, I w took the PCH to San Fran, and that took me maybe like eight, six hours. <laughs> I, how did yeah. Jose not get to from, San Diego? From Mission Viejo, Nelson. From Mission Viejo, so you're right there. You're at the you know seventy three, seventy three five is right there. How does it take six hours from there to, uh, you know, to to San Diego? One Direction is performing a concert on the freeway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, that that would cause it. So, is was that the reason why it didn't work out? Like, what happened? Like, I I, oh, I remember you told God. me this story. I don't. But what oh was the God. fallout? I don't even. Oh. You can tell me later. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh live. My God. <laughs> I sound like you're having like bad flashbacks. Uh... Getting that PTSD real hard. You know, right. I remember that. Uh. It was it was tragic. It was it was tragic. Um, <laughs> it was a tragedy. Yeah, it was it was bad. It was it was bad. Um, I mean, it's like PE class, dude. He just had to attend. Like what? Like <laughs> like what, what happened? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, I'll okay, no, you don't have to say it live. You don't have to say it live. I'm just saying. It's... <laughs> okay, let me explain some of it at least. Because it does sound crazy and probable, right? I gotta explain yeah. at least some of it, right? So, this whole thing, this entire saga took, um, if I recall correctly, nearly a full calendar year. 
Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so, nice. Mark, did you go? Did, you didn't go to the first geek meet with me, did you? You didn't. I never went to you a never geek went meet. To a geek meet. Okay. So, you n have any of you guys been to geek meet? Geek meet? No, I, I think I was too young at the okay. time. Okay. So, um, so yeah, the 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 original encounter happened at a geek meet, and um. You know, we were doing our Super Dungeon Explorer whatever thing there. Oh, God, that's and, a dating list. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and she showed up. She's, you know, um, and she was super cool. And she's like, hey, I want to game with you guys, this kind of stuff. And, you know, and she was gaming with Jose, and she was, she was giving him shit, like the normal shit, like we give him. And it was good. Like, it was good. They had, like, the good, the good thing or whatever and she was like i'm gonna do the speed dating and and oh you know who was with me Corey was with me it was me Corey, oh god yeah and, and me Corey, jose were there and she's like oh i'm gonna jump into the speed dating and and me and Corey looked at jose and we're like dude you <laughs> have to jump into the speed dating like you have to jump in and speed date. No, it's so good. Like, dude, and I was I threatened to leave his ass. I'm like, I'm just gonna leave you here. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my car right now. I'm gonna drive off. I'm gonna come back in two hours. You have to fix this. You have to fix this. Jesus. Like that's how serious I was. I was like, you have to fix this. Right? Um and he's like, No, no, I'm just gonna go with you guys, whatever, whatever, right? Okay, so, oh, God. Anyways, oh, God. Anyways. <laughs> oh, God. So, <laughs> You're having PTSD right now. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. So, so I'm going to leave. So I'm, like, going to leave this dude. But I'm like, no, he's just, he's going to, he's just going to, he's going to hop in the car. He's going to, he's just going to make, I'm like, okay, okay. All right. Plan B. So. They're packing up, and I approach her, and I said, hey, man, it was great meeting you, blah, 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 and we exchanged numbers. I exchanged numbers with her at that point. I said, are you going to go to more of these? Yeah, I'm going to go. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to meet up. We're going to meet with Jose. This is going to be a thing. Okay. This is wingman level 9,000. This is, oh, just right. oh my God. Jesus. But anyway, so for like the next I'm not kidding you. The next calendar year. Oh, it's another geek meet. Jose, are you going to geek meet? No, I don't feel like... And and I would text Scully and say, are you going? Yeah, I'm going to go. Okay, cool. Jose, she's going. Can we go to geek meet? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> kind of busy. I don't want to... Go. Oh, my like, God. Okay. All right. So, and, you know, I was still doing, like, the gaming stuff there anyway right so i was going anyway didn't matter so i would go i would meet her there i would take a picture of her flipping off jose i would send that to jose for a year i'm not kidding for a year <laughs> oh my god uh, this isn't even poor, a this poor girl, girl dude this poor i feel bad i don't feel bad for jose anymore <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> It, this poor girl. I had dude. a folder on my on my old phone that was just photos of her flipping off Jose. I'm not kidding. I have some photos of her like Gordon came down for one. I had them both pose flipping off Jose. I had all <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> it, it, this went on for a year, okay? And we and then you know we're rolling around a Comic Con, right? And Jose's like, oh, you know, I'm gonna go to Comic Con with this because. Like, Jose, you're going to help me this year? Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to go to Comic-Con with you. Okay, cool. I even, like, and, you know, he's like, he was going to come down on the Wednesday. And I'm like, okay, you know, if you need to, you can, I, I don't like people in my hotel. You guys know this. Because I'm like, yeah, no offense, yeah, yeah. I just don't like people. In my, I just need my own space, right? Uh, yeah, totally get that. But, <laughs> but. I'm like, okay, this has to happen. <laughs> so, so, so he's coming down. I'm like, okay, you don't have a place to stay. Guess what? You can stay. You can sleep on my couch in my room. Like, that's how 
serious Oof. this shit was. Oof. Like, just, you can stay, right? And then, again, this whole thing happens. And at the end of the night, it's like 11 o'clock. He finally shows up. Oh, man. Yeah. And he shows up, and everybody, at that point, everybody's just wiped out. I'm still good to go, but I'm like, okay, whatever, right? Like, I'm, it's Wednesday night, comic, like, you, Wednesday night, Comic Con's 11 o'clock. You're not, like, you don't <clears throat> sleep much during Comic Con. I didn't, I oh. never did. Um, I know Mark doesn't. Um, that's true. <laughs> so, so it's like, what? There's no, no big deal. We're downtown, we're at, um, shit, uh, I don't know. If you, did you guys? Neither of you guys worked that year when we were with Geek Chic, right? I don't think so. No, I didn't. When they had all the fancy, like nerdy game tables, we had this whole cool setup with Geek Chic, where it was like all of our games and all of their tables. It was dope. And then they did, and then they had a special. So they had one at the convention center, and then they had. Um, then they had that one off-site that I couldn't... Sean knows, will know exactly what it is if I should, if I found a picture and send it to it him. It probably would. You'd know exactly what uh-huh. it is. It's like one of those like old-fashioned style um, uh, buildings, which is like... It was like a bar on top. It was like a bar on one side, and it wasn't a true restaurant. It was just sort of tapas. So it was like a bar yeah. on one side, and then the back side was like... Uh, you have this like um, walk-through... Um, garden and then you have a gallery and this yeah, is one of yeah, those places exactly like, what you're talking about yeah this is the place like when whenever they had authors that would come after hours and the authors would host like a little cocktail um like a cocktail meet and greet this was mm-hmm. that's the place i'm telling you about they had yeah. the piano and they had the guy that sang the he sang like ironic superhero songs they were like classic you know, classic piano songs, but they would throw in superhero names because it's fucking Comic Con or whatever. Spider Man. Anyway, what? Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. It was this, it was that place, and that place was pretty dope, right? It was pretty, and and again, because all of the in the lounge, all of the furniture was Geek Chic, and we were gaming with one of the owners of Geek Chic. They didn't care. We had all night there. Right, yeah. um, and we we were playing everyone's favorite game, Tentacle Bento, because it's dope. <laughs> Tentacle <laughs> Bento, love Tentacle Bento. It was one of Scully's favorite games. Was Tentacle Bento? She loved that game. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, eleven o'clock rolls around. He finally shows up, and he's just got nothing left. He's like, he's got like nothing left in the tank. So like nothing happened it was yeah it was just a total on the inside. and she was good to go she's like yeah it's still still early blah 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 and she asked me like afterwards because he's like uh okay can you just let me in the room i'm just super tired like fuck okay like okay i'm gonna let jose into the room and she's like well you know we still run around it's still like it's 11 o'clock and I was like, ah, oh, nah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, my God. <laughs> this my poor girl. girl. Yeah, it was bad. So she she came down and visited the next day. She came down to where we were the next day, played a couple of games with me. Jose wasn't, I forget what the hell he was doing, but he was oh not there again. Oh, my God. Oh my god. <laughs> but but there's a happy ending. There's a happy ending, right? So at the end of the weekend, um she ends up meeting another dude down there at Comic Con. Right? And mm-hmm. and she ended up I think they're engaged or they're already married or something. Wow. Like that was like her dude dude. Like that actually worked out super well for her in the end. Wow. It was not a good beginning. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm telling you right there. What? That dude is a government agent. 
I mean, God. <laughs> I like how this stopped being a painting show to talk about <laughs> Ruzi's fa- like failure at maybe having a love life. I oh god, I it just hurts. It hurt. The retelling hurts. It's how bad it was. <laughs> I'm sure that it does. <laughs> oh, because the retelling hurts because it was like I if you know full disclosure, like she and I were actually becoming like friends, friends. Like, we should, because you think about it, we had a calendar year to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> she was actually gaming with me at the time, probably more than I was gaming with Mark. And, yeah. And, like, so, that, yeah. I, even now, I was like, man, I put it, actually, I put in a lot of time into this. What the hell? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it hurts oh. when you're like oh. the super hardcore wingman. That was like next level wingman. Happening. Yeah, like w- like we're still like we're still Facebook friends and like I still see some of her stuff occasionally on social media. <laughs> she's. I wonder if she's still in my phone. I bet. I bet her phone number is still in my phone. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. Your contacts. Yeah, that that wow. I'm not gonna dox her. Nah, not no, a lot not, of work. She's not on this phone. She's not on this phone. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, I don't know. Those were the days. One wild <laughs> shit like that would just happen. <laughs> like apropos of absolutely nothing. A small portion of me really feels bad for you because you're like. The super wingman, the go getter. <laughs> it's like, like no. I, well, okay, it, I probably, I probably went harder than I should have, and maybe that kind of intimidated Jose. If you know what I mean, probably. If, if that makes sense, right? Like maybe, yeah. Maybe me going in like, oh no, we're just gonna like me saying we're just gonna make this happen, and then like. <laughs> Like, then creating a 12-month relationship with another person <laughs> to make it happen. Probably. I think I miss... I more miss the theater of Comic-Con than I miss actually going to Comic-Con. That totally makes sense, and I totally miss it yeah. as well. Because there was some... There was always weird shit that we would get into <laughs> at There Comic-Con. always is. It was, like, Octave's murder hotel room with <laughs> Howard Johnson. <laughs> Oh, that's like my favorite. Go on. That's my favorite Comic Con story because it's absolutely amazing. Like flight train now. It. it, I think it was one of, if not the last year that Octave went to Comic Con. It was. It wasn't um, the last year, but it was one of the last years. Yeah, and uh, God, at the time it was Jake. Billy and I all took you to a hotel room, and first of all, the way up there was wonderful, because there was a pool, there's just this really old man sitting on a box facing the opposite direction of the pool, (laughs) and he was supposed to be the lifeguard. (laughs) (laughs) He was just sitting in the parking lot, facing the opposite direction of the pool. And on the way up, it didn't rain that weekend, or like the week at all, but on the way up, there's this mystery fluid dripping <laughs> from the ceiling in the stairwell. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, that thing was in a oh. drip like the entire week. <laughs> oh, 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 my gosh. There was no and that's okay. there was a condenser or anything anywhere near that, where that location um, was. Yeah, oh. it was just always dripping. <laughs> And we get into the hotel room, and first of all, there's a big, big stain on the carpet. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like roughly the size of a bed, like oh, yeah. a single bed. And there's a bracket on the wall where there was obviously supposed to be a second bed. Oh no! And um, oh. the doorway had obviously been like with a uh, yeah. It it was obvious that the door had been kicked open at one point. 
So oh, we theorized no. yeah. that there was a police standoff in the room. The police kicked the door and shot the guy, and he fell back on the bed and bled out there. Oh, God. <laughs> and there was no smoke. I think there's like, there's either no smoke detector, or there's just one. And there was obvious a spot where a smoke, smoke detector should go. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jake, Billy, and I got this, like, really nice um, two-double-bed hotel room at, like, a Hilton. And he made a reservation the week before. Yeah. Paul Active had his for, like, months in advance. Yeah, I, oh, I reserved God. back in March. <laughs> Just lord. Oh. Mystery fluids and bed size I stains. That, I didn't let my wife stay in that room. I was like, this is. Oh. Cool. Yeah? She was going to come down. I'm like, I'll come down and hang out. Uh, no, not this year. Okay. You're just like, no. Not, this is not okay. This is not a safe place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, man, it's better than LA murder mystery room. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's LA, better than LA hostels, man. Oh, God, uh, LA hostels. <laughs> That should never be a thing. That man owes you like a <laughs> favor. Like he owes you something. He owes just you second... your firstborn kid. Jesus. Ah. Octave, Octave was telling me that story, and the second that he said we went to a hostel in yeah. LA, I knew it was immediately taking a turn for the worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's like the first major red flag. Yeah. It's like that was... nope. That was not a good idea. Those hostel movies are actually based off of hostels in LA. Like, yeah, I would believe it's based that. on nothing other than my sole belief that it's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I'll I'll drink his um, I'll drink his uh, uh hazelnut drink and tell you the more like unedited version of these stories. <laughs> Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> you know, we need to visit. Um, there's this coffee shop that opened up. It's in Anaheim, though, so it might be a bit of a drive. But apparently, there's like this nerd coffee shop called Requiem Coffee. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, Everybody's been talking about that. Yeah. So, my friend's sister's husband is the guy that opened up the shop. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I actually know, like, the wife of this guy. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. And it's funny because when my friend described this guy, because I know I've heard stories of him before, but I'm not going to like air out. Like, <laughs> he's just a funny guy. But like, he told me, he's like, all right, look at a Final Fantasy like cover, right? Then look at, like, that's exactly what he looks like. And I was like, there's no way. And then I saw him, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> One way of making it. Yeah, I was what? like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, so, I don't know, we could, it's got good reviews, and I mean, it might be a good spot to air out some Malifaux. Mm -hmm. I just heard parking there is a bit annoying, so. Well, it's in know. Anaheim, so. Yeah, it's up to you guys, I'm just, I'm just letting it out there that we might be able to, to reel in some Malifaux peeps. We'd have to pick a. Yeah, I mean, we probably have to like pick a date, like a Tuesday night or a Thursday night, and then just all plan on meeting up there. Yeah, that could be. I mean, that could work. We we could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm surprised we haven't got more traction from um, GameCraft because, like, yeah, we get people asking us at least like three or four people a night. Every time we get well, in there. I am a little surprised, but I'm also not really surprised because the people who go to Gangcraft aren't there to play miniature games. Yeah. True. Oh. True. Like, they're there because they're there for a work party or, you know, they're there to play exactly. a board game and yeah. have a beer. Yeah. And they're normally there. They don't go by themselves. Like, they normally go in groups. So it's pretty hard to tear someone away from their groups. It's like... Well, what Unless... I mean is, is not even that, but the people that, like, we send them over to CQ, you know, they're like, oh, where can I find out more about this game? Uh, yeah. Right? And we always, like, in, because we're not, like, putting it out there necessar necessarily. They they usually come up to us, and, and they're like, hey, guys, what is this? And we That's tell true. them, and then they're like, oh, where can I, you know, where can I find out more about it? And like, oh, yeah, just go around the corner, go to CQ. Yeah. 
So I'm surprised we haven't got like more. And I don't know. I, I, the CQ staff haven't. They didn't. They haven't said anything about like people showing up from GameCraft. They're like, hey, I saw this game over GameCraft. I don't. I don't think any of that happens. But I don't know. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's hard to tear somebody away from a group unless you're active and unless you get really drunk at Kingdom Come. No. Oh, <laughs> if and start like three different games, but walk away from all of them. Yeah. <laughs> To go just talk to some pirates. Yeah. I have... I put up... When I'm drunk, I put up the... I like... It's like Aura 6, and then, like, everyone gets best friend tokens. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm like that. Everybody's suddenly my best friend. That was the same year uh, Jake and I, I... I can never remember the game's name because I was, like, completely gone. When we were playing it, but we played some like guessing game with Worry, where one person would give like vague details as to what the clue was, and uh, the two people have to guess it. Problem is, Worry is practically sober, and Jake and I are both like ten sheets to the wind. Just don't leave them alone because they'll probably end up at the Dairy Queen halfway across town. Oh, just gone. Yeah, Roy and is, the frustration is, that we caused him from playing that one game was absolutely amazing, and I wish we had recorded it. I cannot tell when Rory is drunk. I can't either. I, I have not been able to either. To the point where I, I don't think, think he, he can just, get like, drunk. He smiles occasionally, and then that's the, his tell that he's drunk. <laughs> this is when he displays human emotion. Yeah, when he starts. <laughs> Oh, God. appears to be human for a moment and then like oh I think he's drunk oh I miss Rory Rory was awesome I miss the monster I miss the good story I miss Rory's magical cooler dude that thing was amazing it was like an AV cart that was also a cooler <laughs> he would just leave us in charge of it hey Octave I'm gonna leave you with this cart you can drink whatever beer you want from it just hang out by it. <laughs> no! I remember one year I walked up to Bartley and, you know, at time he's like, yeah, dude, what's up? And within, like, it must have been the span of two minutes he was already offering me alcohol. <laughs> and that is more what I miss about Kingdom Con than, like, actually going to Kingdom Con was hanging out with people. And occasionally, yeah. Bartley would take us out and buy us food at, like, really good places. <laughs> like, he took me... For one Malifo tournament, we, he took me to this Japanese restaurant down there, near the store where he was henching at. It was really fucking good food. Mm -hmm. But I cannot remember what the place is called. Oh, Kingdom Con. It's sad. I've already missed the Kingdom Con. Yeah. I didn't even go last year, and I missed it, too. Last year, I stayed sober. <laughs> yeah, Kingdom it was Con. tame. Last yeah. Kingdom Con was very tame. Yeah. Mm. Well, the last one I went to was relatively tame, too, because they moved where the drug quest stuff was happening. Mm. They didn't I mean, I still got quest tanked, but... This last year. Hmm. Yeah. It was it was that tame. I remember the last year I went, somebody gave me a drink that tasted like a Jolly Rancher, told me what it was made of, and I cannot remember. Oh. I remember, I think there was one year, it was me and Matt, we were playing Relic Knights, and we dropped a model that was literally on the ground, and we could not find it. <laughs> like, 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 it was that bad to the point where the next day, Octave was like, yeah, we found this. It was, like, next to your seat. <laughs> but two, two grown men are, like, looking for, like, a model that's right there. And we're like, where did it go? We're like, oh, oh God. That was, on. yeah, I, I used one of my man lives. That yeah. Yeah. I've, I've used, I have not gotten that bad in, like, 
three years. It took me three years to get to close to that point. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was rough. Yeah. That was rough. Sorry, guys. You go, <laughs> you go to One Kingdom Con, get wasted like that, and then it just, like, puts your whole life in perspective. Yeah, like, my whole family was, like, calling and texting me the next day, and they don't do that. That's the funny thing. They never like actually do that. They're like, "Hey, how's how's Kingdom Con? Are you how you doing? You're eating right?" I'm like, "Oh God, oh, like, oh, like this could have gone very south. Like all the signals like were out." So true. <sighs> Matt, I God, I missed Kingdom, Kingdom Con Matt. now. <laughs> Matt, you don't remember when we were me and Matt were like. We were like crying outside the door, like we gotta save this guy. We yeah, this guy. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but like the problem was, like I couldn't move, right? <laughs> so like, <laughs> and like it was weird because, like for some reason, my pants were off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like I saw my pants. Like, <laughs> That's like, I'm gonna kick the door down. I'm like, bro, trust. You don't want to kick the door down. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> it's. I remember one year. I cannot remember who I was rooming with this year. But I remember uh, Kevin, Corey, myself, and uh, PhD in Feelings. Oh yeah, yeah. In feelings? In feelings. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. I don't remember his name, but Octave knows who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I remember the two of us got <laughs> so like hammered. We we're all trying to get food. It's like, yeah, we'll just all go to Carl's Jr. And somehow I had like a brief moment of sobriety, where it's like, oh, you know, we shouldn't go out anywhere. We should just you know hang out in the hotel room while they go get food. And uh, that's what we did. We hung out in the hotel, and he's like, man, I gave you that arrow, dude, and drink, like, drink it, jokingly. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to stand up and chug that whole can of ale. Yep. <laughs> that really was it. Uh -oh. <laughs> yep. Yep, that was bad. <laughs> and, like, and Matt, it's funny, because Matt's saying, like, <laughs> I'm reading what Matt's saying, but, like, um, that whole day, we were, like, me and Matt were just, like, you know, sipping on something the entire day, and it was like at 11 p.m. Yep, we made a grave mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you get out of the con floor, you get to your hotel room, you have that moment of silence, like, oh god, my whole day was a mistake. <laughs> so, but like the funny thing is, like it was a, it was a battle to get to my hotel. Room. Like I remember this. Like, this is the first time ever where, like, I had to really think about how to walk from a point A to B. <laughs> like, so, like, I'm like, all right, I know I'm on the fourth, I think we're on the third or fourth floor. I'm like, I'm on the third or fourth floor. So, like, I go to, like, the, the third floor, right? And then I'm like, oh, no, I took the wrong elevator. <laughs> so I have to walk around the entire, like, floor looking like I'm like, you know, like the Braille they put on, like, the the room numbers. So you yeah. know what room you're in? Like, I'm feeling the Braille. <laughs> so trying to be like, where am I? You were so drunk that you suddenly gained the ability to read Braille. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I'm like, wait, wait, do I go left or right? And this was like a mental conversation for like a minute. I'm like, do I go left <laughs> or right? <laughs> because, and it's a circle, right? So no matter where I go, I'm eventually going to get there. But I'm like, what is the shortest route, right? <laughs> oh, boy. And the time it's taking me to think of should I turn left or right because I took the wrong elevator is like longer than it would take for me just to walk in the circle. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the year, the year that I bunked with Corey, we ended up getting like a temporary hotel room because the door to our original hotel room just didn't want to unlock. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was the first Kingdom Cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, like the people who 
like the hotel staff had to like remove the door yeah the entire like doorknob thing and replace it oh. because they couldn't get it open either like it would read the card and it would like acknowledge that it read the right card but it just wouldn't unlock mm. and um that was the con that I ended up drinking an entire bottle of watermelon flavored vodka with an entire like two liter bottle of orange Fanta. Oh lord! And the next morning, I was so sick. Yeah, I remember showing up and sitting with Kevin and them while they were playing uh, some card game, and um, him just saying, "Dude, you look like the embodiment of nihilism." <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that was the last time that I got like really gone at a Kingdom Con. I don't even know how half of the people are able to do it, but some people can. Yeah, it's... I remember signing up for a Guild Ball tournament on Saturday, and the event of me not knowing and suddenly like being able to read Braille was on Friday. <laughs> so like. <laughs> <laughs> so like I wake up the next morning I'm like I'm not gonna make it <laughs> and I text Octane this I'm like I'm gonna try man and then I got out from my bed and I was like no <laughs> I think, I think, no. Right, I I think uh, <clears throat> I think Octave will remember it was one of the kingdom cons that we were working for Malifo. okay and we all, like, after the day was done, we all, like, uh, it's where Rory went and played uh, Drunk Quest. And then after that, we all, like, got together in that sushi restaurant, and we were all ordering. And at one point, Rory's ha head just sinks into his hands. <laughs> and he, that was, like, and after all, he gets up, and he's like, I gotta go lay down. Oh. <laughs> the next morning, we don't see Rory until, like, 2 in the afternoon. Oh, you know? yeah, 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 I remember Until, that. like, 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Yeah. Dude. Bad. I've never been that bad at Kingdom Con. I mean, I've lost days. Like, <laughs> but I'm physically, you know, I'm, I'm like, I haven't been, like, trapped in my hotel room. But I've had days go by that I'm not sure what happened that day. I've there was a that night happen. that, uh, yeah, that there was a night that Jose <laughs> and uh, somebody else was your watcher. You all went to Taco Bell and you almost just walked across the street. <laughs> to in and they found me. What? They found me at. They, yeah, they went to Taco Bell, and I gave them my order, and then they found me at In and Out. What? <laughs> And I had like made friends with a bunch of people in and out. <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> they pulled me out of that. That's yeah, that's a problem. That must have been... I become best friends with everybody when I'm. And like when you become best friends with people at In and Out at like, well, it must have been like eleven, twelve o'clock at night. They're not good people. Yeah. But I, but see, I, this is where I'm bad because I'm best friends with everybody. It doesn't matter at that point. That's true. <laughs> like that that time that you started a game of Room Twenty Five Relic Knights and some other third thing, and just started talking to pirates all night. You guys were like the best of friends. Yeah. I remember thinking at some point he must have met, met these people before. Oh. No. <laughs> but. <laughs> And then the worst part is they come up to me the next day and they still think we're best friends. And I don't know them or what we said or anything. But you have to pretend like you do. Okay, the saddest part was like that there was a Kingdom Con where I was, you know, I was in the I was in that I was in final form, right? <laughs> final instinct. And I ran into Regan. I ran into Regan, no and way. I'm hanging out with Regan, and I'm like, oh, man, all this other stuff, right? And then the next day, Regan comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, Octave, man, I just want to say that meant a lot to me. You, that's, That was so great what you said. And, this, and and he's looking at my face, and, like, my face is just blank. 
Like, oh, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? Oh no! <laughs> and he, oh and then, no! And he gets it, and he's like, "Wait, you don't remember any of that, do you?" <laughs> oh no! Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, you know. <laughs> That's the funny thing about Rick. Oh, okay. I'm picking up stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> He's like, yeah. He said I was like one of the best things that happened to gave me. He gave me a big hug in front of all my friends. And he, <laughs> I was like, I don't even remember any. The, soul, the idea of you, like, hugging anybody is just so alien no, to me. No, I get real. Yeah, it's bad. I'm, everybody's my best friend. Like, I get real huggy. Like, everybody's like, yeah, well, you know, and... Then that's why I get in trouble with them, like steampunk cons and shit. Like that's it. That's just I. <coughs> that's what happens. <laughs> Steam, people go to steampunk cons to get some action. Yeah. Yeah. Some it's, it's like it's furry cons. People at steampunk cons, man. Thirsty, thirsty people. Super thirsty. Yeah. I just want to get some strange. You just want to get some strange, <laughs> and you're like, but I'm, you know. I just go. Cap. I go final form, and people don't. They they read it the wrong Cap. way. They don't know. <laughs> if you if you got a PhD, then you get some Doctor Strange. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right, folks. I gotta get up in like five hours. So. Oh no. <laughs> but we're almost done right. with these. We'll finish these tomorrow night. But anyway. I gotta go. Good night, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. night. <laughs> there was some painting that happened. <laughs> <laughs> In between con stories. <laughs> yeah.